Oh, that's good. Move away from the price tag. Ah. I forgot to take those off. Jeez, John spends way more than that when he comes over. Oh, oh you're trying to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> At least when he brings his own beer over, it's not like garbage. <laughs> mine's mine's going to be good. Okay. Did he did he try to force his uh, uh, ESB on you yet? I have uh, No, only when we went over to his Oh, place. yeah. Okay, yeah. that was pretty bad. Where he was going, yeah, there's more of that in the keg. <laughs> yeah, John, I know there is. No. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't that. You can scoot this way so you're on frame. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I like it over there. Yeah, it's private. Yeah, it's quiet. It's my own corner I can cry. <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 96, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm Steve. Welcome, everyone. Uh, if you are new to the show, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is, like I said, your once weekly live show, or our once weekly live show that you happen to be watching uh, my once monthly live show yeah well <laughs> steve's once monthly live show for the latest in beer and tech news uh so what this is is us talking about uh about 20 minutes of beer news about mm -hmm. an hour hour and 20 minutes of tech news and then kind of whatever we want to talk about and tonight there's actually quite a bit of gaming news that we're going to get into yeah. uh, a lot of nintendo stuff came out uh some new releases on that uh some surprising new releases on the switch mm -hmm. so we'll dive into that a little bit later in the show uh we do try to keep it as family friendly as humanly possible both language and content however do be aware we are drinking adult beverages on the yes. show uh mild nudity sometimes mild yeah mild nudity sometimes. demonetized <laughs> yeah no we we really do keep it friendly I, I think it's been like months since any of us has like legitimately sworn on the show yeah or it slipped out or something right yeah. I, I think I, I think i said a damn last week okay uh and and there's the the counter for today yeah but, oh there uh, it goes yep yeah it's yep. But yeah, it's it's been quite a while. So yeah, Steve, how are you doing this week? No, yeah, not bad. Not new? No, not no, really. Not bad. <laughs> cool. Well, I, I mean, I got my I got my own oh, my the, home brew beer. Yes. That I keg, uh, last week. Nice. Um, which I brought on the show. So this is a uh, pineapple milkshake IPA. Uh, and it's about mm, I'm gonna guess it's about six point eight percent. Which when you say that. It's it's a decent color. Yeah, it's, it's a nice color. More more of an orangey, like a tangerine yeah, kind of yeah, color. Yeah, but... yeah. I use yeah. a citra and uh, amarillo hops. And okay. Thing. So it's 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 very citrus and pineapple tropical tasting IPA. Nice. Yeah. And then uh, we've also got ale. Uh, <laughs> you've got ale. You've got ale. You've which, got ale. Which, which I, I love, love the, uh, the can, can right there. there. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Focus. There we go. You've got ale. <laughs> uh, this is what a. Five and a half, six? Yeah, I'm not too sure. What is it? It's a hazy IPA. It's a hazy from, IPA. Uh, from Matchless. Matchless. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. A 6.8. 6.8. 6 okay. so it's about the same as mine. Yeah. Uh, and so, just to be a little contrarian, I went ahead and brought a cider this week. Uh, two Towns Cider House out of... Uh, they're out of Bend, right? And uh, two Towns, I think, is... Corvallis. Corvallis. Excuse yeah. me. Corvallis. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. Small yeah. Oregon town. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Two Town Cider House, Bad Apple, Imperial Apple Cider, 10.5%. Yeah, it's a big apple cider. So, double audio on the second camp. Again? What the crap? Hearing two mics when you go to second camp. Okay, uh -oh. stop talking for a second. We just won't go to second camera today. I guess. Well, <laughs> no. Not what we go to it too often anyway. Echo, 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 echo. Yeah, sorry. Oh, great. Yeah. Chad, I think we su <laughs> we sufficiently mentioned the audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, heavy Palm, $2 donation. Cheers, yeah, yeah, gang. Right. It's my birthday and I've been sick. Ooh, oh, that sucks. Happy oh, birthday. Yeah. I, but, was, uh, I was sick last week too. Okay. Too, yeah. Well, that's lame. Glad you're better now. Yeah. I know. Well, I drank it all the way, so. There you go. I, I wasn't feeling all that great like Monday and Tuesday. Today I'm feeling pretty, pretty good. A yeah. little, little tired, a little yeah. like achy and sore. But, yeah. but no, overall pretty good. Uh, had a good day of volleyball on uh, on Sunday for, for Labor Day. We, we get together the day before Labor Day, so we have Monday to rest did up. Did you guys reenact the volleyball scene from Top Gun? Oh, uh, we do guys? not. Oh. Uh, that's, that's been outlawed. <laughs> no, no aviators and, uh, and shirtless. But, no. Oh. But yeah, no, it's, it's uh, always a good time. Uh, had some... Uh, some good sausages and ribs and yeah, yeah yeah good time all right uh what do we want to start with let's let's start with mine before it um 
decarbonates. <laughs> 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 if it goes flat, we don't want flat beer. Probably a good idea. Because I did pour this from my tap. I keg most of my stuff. Uh, although there was enough left over when I was kegging this that I bottled a few of it. Ooh, uh, Matthew says he's sending us out some homemade mead. He's shipping it out on oh, Friday. Oh, nice. Sweet. We'll definitely have to drink that on the show. Heck yes. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, that is, uh, these guys get into doing a lot of the home brews. I've actually been wanting to get into doing uh, home, homemade mead. Uh, I've been actually genuinely curious about that and starting to read up on it. So uh, I'd love to try some. <laughs> yeah. No, I've had a few uh, people who came by with, oh, you know what? I didn't make this right. Well, here, it's okay. I've had plenty of this, so we'll switch. <laughs> oh, what a friend. Yeah. Smell that. Ooh. It smells good, right? Very, more of the citrus forward, but that sweet pineapple. Mm -hmm. when, it's in oh. there. Yeah, it's in there. Oh, that's good. Cheers, Steve. Uh -huh. Cheers to you all. Cheers. Wait. That is not bad. Definitely, uh, very pineapple-y, but, mm -hmm. ooh, wow. I was going to say, not overly, like, juicy. It finishes very, very late. Yeah. Like, two seconds after you think it should, it turns just into straight-up pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is solid. Yeah. No, it's it's a very easy-drinking, yep. wonderful little bit. I'm super happy with it. I was like, yeah. It's probably, like, top two beers I've ever made. The, it's definitely. it's pretty fantastic. Uh, definitely have a little bit of that hazy bite acid, mm -hmm. but it's it's very very subtle, it, and it's definitely not overpowering. Like, and I complain about hazies all the time. Like, yeah. I enjoy drinking them, but only four ounces at a yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with this one. No, this one isn't really technically a hazy, mm -hmm. uh, although it is kind of cloudy, and that's mainly from the pineapple juice. Mm -hmm. It was it was actually quite clear until I added the pineapple juice. Okay. And of course, homebrew it's very very hard to filter out all the pulpiness and stuff right. like that's in there. So this this haze is probably mostly the pineapple juice. Okay. Nice. So it's it's not uh, it's not a, a technically a hazy. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get into a little bit of beer news. Uh, starting with a little bit of mix of game and beer news. Oh yeah. So, uh, 2K Games and uh, uh, was that Beaver Town Brewing have announced that they are teaming up to create a Borderlands Three themed beer. That's right. Uh, now, Beaver Town, which is kind of funny because we have a beaver tin not too far well from we us. were the beaver state yeah we are that makes sense but <laughs> so, beaver town yeah which is uh a british right it's a british which brewery. is not an oregon brewery. not an oregon yeah <laughs> uh they're doing three and i think they're uh ipa a light ipa um they're low abv yes so uh they're kind of kid friendly i guess i don't know <laughs> they they're be... probably no stronger than those capri suns we talked about last week yeah that's right yeah the the, the ones that got fermented in the, yeah. in the thing um, yeah, so they're very light. So if you're looking for a big beer, mm -hmm. can't can't really right. get it there. But uh, Zima's even even bumming its chest. Yeah, at this one. yeah, I know. Um, but I I don't know if you can get it here in the U.S. I went to their website and I saw an ordering page. Okay, and it did have the U.S. Li listed as a place you can ship to. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much it's going to cost. So okay, yeah, you might be able to order some. I don't know. Yeah, we might try to to strike some up. Uh -huh. Whoa. Uh, BRP, uh, $42 donation. Here's some more beer to go oh, with all your meat. meat. <laughs> nice. Thank you, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers definitely. 42 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's going to get some nice bourbon barrel aged something somethings. Yes. Or maybe just some straight up bourbon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even better. <laughs> yeah. Skip the middleman. It's just, yep. I'm going to bourbon barrel age my liver. Well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Hardest working liver in the galaxy. Oh, yeah. Uh, limited edition Bandit Brew, 2.8% is the stealthy ABV with hints of pina colada and passion fruit. So yeah. going definitely with the uh, the very citrus and tropical forward. Mm -hmm. uh, available soon. Yeah. What that has to do with the Borderlands 3, I don't know. Who but, knows? You know, you'd think it tastes like gunmetal or something like that. Right. Yeah. Gunmetal and cell shading. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Skull, don't do that. You changed your uh, your icon. I don't know who you are anymore. <laughs> Discord. Oh, did, oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, he did change it. Yeah. Like, who is the... Oh, oh it's Skull. Yeah. yeah, just Skull. All right, moving right along. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Hawkhead Brewery launches a new 0.5% beer. 
Yeah, this is probably the lightest outside of non-alcoholic beer you can you can get. Right. Which I, I've seen this trend before, and I don't know why. It's like a big trend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at the Ben Brew Festival uh, a couple weeks ago, and I saw that too. Deschutes had a 2.5% beer Yeah. there. Um, didn't see too many takers on it, Yeah. but it was there. And so now we just saw the... Uh, there we go. Borderlands 3 beer, which is very, very low sessionable. And then this is even lower. I don't know. Sorry, uh, I'm screwing up my chair over here. <laughs> it's not exactly what I would call a positive trend in my idea. But hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe you know, people... Maybe it is. You know, a, as much as I do enjoy high ABV beers, right. I would like some beers that have some flavor to them that are in the 4% range. More, I've had, more, I, I quite have a had, few more sessionable yeah, beers. Yeah, I have had quite a few sessionable beers that was really, really good. What was mm-hmm. one that I just had recently? It was quite excellent. Oh, it was uh, by Lewitt. They had the Rabbit Ninja or something like that. Okay. It was a sessionable 4.2, <clears throat> but it's very good. Nice. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got the Founders All Day IPA. I think that's mm. a 4, 5, yeah. 4, 8, something yeah. like that. Um, and there's a couple others that are down there. But when you're in the craft beer, it's really 5% and above. Yeah. And sometimes I just want, you know, the, light the equivalent yeah. of grown-up Kool-Aid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without going be. natty ice. Yeah. Yeah. No, no natter day. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, for me. that's just, that's just you know, mm-hmm. sugar water and malt mm-hmm. liquor. So, yeah, while I would like some lighter beers, 0.5%, as the chat points out, why bother? Yeah, I know. That, that <laughs> seems too low. Like, you're right. Like, a 4% session bolt, that's okay. I, I get that. I've left lemonade in the sun and wound up with more. Yes, I know. <laughs> I think NyQuil has more. Yeah. Yeah. Mouthwash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, while it's a, it's a decent idea, um, and I'm not going to fault him for, for trying, Yeah. Um, why bother? Yeah. I mean, I don't remember reading anything. All you're going to get out of there is a lager anyway. Yeah. It's just some it's some malt water with hops. I have had hop soda once before, mm-hmm. which obviously had, you know, zero alcohol. Right. That tasted terrible. It was not good. <laughs> hops are not good by themselves. I don't know no. if anyone knows that. No. Well, um, some people really like that flavor. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I wouldn't just like munch on a hop or anything mm-hmm. like that. That's just way too bitter. Or just drop it in soda water. Yeah, just like call it a good. Yeah, yeah. let it sit for a while. I do like uh, quite a bit of seltzers. Um, uh, I'll drink tonic water and seltzers and, and things like yeah. that. And and uh, I do a lot of uh, Italian sodas. Yeah. And so just add a little bit of a syrup to something. Um, mm. I've got an amaretto syrup that's killer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You add a little, you know, half an ounce of amaretto syrup mm-hmm. to a thing of seltzer. And it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the whole trend with like this white claw and stuff like that. You can get like yeah. a really light seltzer and just throw some vodka in there. Yeah. Hey, there you go. You got you got yeah. yourself an alcoholic seltzer. I've, I've done the amaretto syrup with a little vodka before. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's that's it's fantastic that as well. It's probably way cheaper than the white claw. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah. It is. So, uh, and uh, in other news. Jeez, third story. Okay. Oh, wait. Somebody said they just checked. Not only are the cases and six packs of the Borland beer sold out, they seem to they they seems they don't ship to the U.S. Okay. Well, that, that's good okay. Yeah. Oh, that that might have been. I don't know. Well, I guess we won't be getting any then. Yeah. Oh well. So, there anybody in the U.K. that wants to ship us some? I I do know a couple uh, uh, PR managers for some different game companies. Two K is not one of them. So. Oh yeah. Oh well. So. Just have to try again later on. Uh, introducing the world's first wind-powered beer. That's correct. Uh, so Meridian is uh, basically doing a windmill-powered brewery. Mm-hmm. So everything is that powers the the brewery, the pumps, the the burners, everything. Mm-hmm. It's all, I guess, wind-powered. So yep. Make the obvious joke that their beer blows. Um, <laughs> get that out of the way right now. It's got a nice airy <laughs> feel to it. Though. Yeah, it's got. It's really light-hearted. Yeah. Yeah. Props to them. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand's largest renewable energy generator, uh, Meridian, is uh, partnering with, what was the brewery name? Uh, Garage Project Brewery. Garage Project, yeah. That's right. Uh, and yeah, they're basically trying to go 100% renewable down there in New Zealand. So, Well, more power to them, I more guess. Power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah. Uh, of course, it's going to suck when it stops blowing wind and like ah we're out of beer guys sorry yep gotta wait for the wind picks up 
It's like when the waves stop rolling in. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, we're out of waves. Coming in tomorrow. Yep. It's all done. Yep. Is my server alive again? Ooh, touchy subject. Oh, uh, yeah. Touchy subject. No, no. It's not back up. It's still dead. Uh, $200 replacement on the way. Yep. That one, that one bites. This is the project that has been fighting me at every possible avenue. Yeah. I, I am really looking forward to the, fin to the final project. Not only because I think it's going to be really cool to get mm -hmm. either four or six of us together. I, we might need to be limited to four just as far as PCI and, and overhead mm -hmm. for the server. Because I'm going to have 20 cores, but you throw six gamers at that. You give them three cores each, you're at 18. Yeah. And and you only got two cores to handle overhead. Mm -hmm. So it's get, we're flirting with disaster as far as right. the maxing out six gamers. Uh, so it might end up being a four-gamer project or a four-video editor project or whatever it may be. But I'm looking forward to being done because I think it's just going to be so cool to be able to sit anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, and, and be able to, to and, the, and use, a, use a thin client and do whatever you want. And I'm going to be even more thrilled because it's going to be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to deal with it anymore. Uh, I am enjoying the heck out of this project, but when you're trying to produce a video on it and you literally spend four days beating your head into a table over uh, you're reading instructions on how things should work and, and nothing's working and, and digging things up from the past. Because remember, Kepler came out about six years ago. And so I'm recobbling history and, and different versions of hypervisors and different versions of drivers to kind of make this work six years in the future. Yeah. And it doesn't want to cooperate. And, and the documentation for playing with this kind of stuff is non-existent because this was a $3,000 GPU. Yeah. Uh, 4000 if you wanted the Grid K2. The Tesla was the $3,000 one. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, there, there's no documentation for what I'm doing. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a... Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a little hit or miss, and I'm going to be really, really excited to see it finished, but really excited to get it done as well, because it's taken a lot of time. Uh, is Jeff using a new lens for this episode? It seems like the hosts are in focus, but the foreground and background are much more blurry. I am. Uh, I am kind of testing a new lens, uh, not for this show, but just seeing if I like the lens in general. Uh, this is probably going to be a, uh, my new B-roll lens. Uh, uh oh. Oh, no. I saw it. What's up? It's, it's, we're good. Oh, it hiccuped? Mind. Yeah, it hiccuped. Okay. There was another hiccup. Okay. Interesting. Anyway, yes, I am new, using a new lens. This is going to be my new my new B-roll lens. And you did call it. You nailed it absolutely. Uh, it's a completely different focal length than I've used before. The camera scooted back about another two feet or so. Um, and it has a much shallower depth of field. So, yeah, this is no longer in focus. And this is no longer in focus. I love the look of the background. I think the background looks great. But we don't have quite a, as much depth here as I really wanted. But that's not what it's for. This is for using on my three-axis uh, Edelkrone slider uh, because it's a nice, a nice lightweight lens compared to my Sigma 18 to 35 beastie but absolutely gorgeous uh, primary lens that I've been using. Um, so uh, this is actually a very very inexpensive prime. This is the Seven Artisans 25 millimeter f 1.8, uh, and it weighs. Well, this is the Sony version of it. Uh, it weighs almost nothing. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, that's not even paperweight. Right. That's, like, yeah, very light. C compared to mm. the Beastie. I think I can use this to, like, get my biceps up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, th this is two pounds, two and a half pounds, yeah. probably, almost. This is measured in, like, triple gram digits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. A uh, lot, lot uh, shallower depth of field. It's going to look amazing in B-roll shots, and that's really what this lens is for. But I just kind of wanted to try it out tonight, see how I liked it. Yeah. Uh, can't I script to my own BIOS? And there's been a lot of people suggesting on different ways to do this. vGPU is different than GPU pass-through. Those are two completely different technologies. And just having PCIe pass-through won't make this solution work. You have to have a vGPU-enabled system. So I'm limited to ESXi with an enterprise license of about $2,000 per year. Oh, God. <laughs> or ZenServer, which is the only one which offers a free version which supports vGPU. Yeah. Um, Zen, right. Yeah. And, and I didn't do a great job explaining why those were my two choices. I just said, for the sake of 
keeping this video under 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I might get into it a little bit more while I'm doing my soldering, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna do some solder work on those GPUs this week, and you'll probably see that video come out maybe Tuesday or so. But uh, while I'm doing the soldering, I'm probably gonna explain a little bit of the licensure. That way you get a little bit of a two for one mm -hmm. combo going on. Solder and licensing, sounds like riveting YouTube. Yep. Uh, your focus is too far back. Uh, pull it forward to the foreground for better focus. Uh, actually, you notice my chair, the pillow is out of focus. I'm touching that. So no, the, this lens only has about that much depth as far as focus goes. And it's about the width of my head. So like my hands in focus, Yeah. I now it's not that, in focus. I notice if I go back like this, my, I get out of focus. Yeah, like this, I'm so focus. yep. Yeah, just annoyed that the beer labels aren't readable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've got ale. Yep. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, well, next. Uh, next. What are we talking about next? Uh, oh, yeah. There we go. No more corn syrup for Budweiser. Oh, did we skip Yeah, we you skipped one. Oh, did I not get it in there? No, oh, we shoot. Didn't get that one. Uh, I'll tab it. I've got Chrome open as well. Okay. Uh, Dude, there last is. one. Uh, if you scroll up and then up, copy up, the up, link. Up. Okay. The Budweiser. Can we copy? And then jump back in Firefox. And let's just get another new tab. New tab out here. There we go. I remember. How I really need some more RAM in my laptop because it's only got eight gigs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Judge orders Anheuser Busch to halt corn syrup uh, on their labels, uh, as in the beer that doesn't contain corn syrup or yeah. no corn <laughs> yeah. syrup added. Yeah. They told them to stop using corn syrup. Yep, yep. so the, the whole Super Bowl thing is finally working full circle where uh, people were like, oh, you know, Miller Lite has corn, corn syrup. syrup. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, what well, doesn't have corn syrup these days? Um, and the corn farmers of America were outraged. Miller Lite was outraged. There were a number of different entities who were outraged. Yep. Um, now, regardless of whether or not corn syrup's actually healthy, because there's a lot of conflicting information there... Most, I just don't think it belongs in beer. I don't think it belongs in beer. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, we can make this a political debate. We can make this a, a health science debate. But at the end of the day, corn syrup probably doesn't belong in beer. But at the same time, it's allowed in beer. And Anheuser-Busch is wrong for calling in what's otherwise a healthy product for being in their competitor's product mm -hmm. when, when they just don't add it. It'd be like Miller Lite saying, we don't brew with rice. Yeah, yeah. Well, they still do. They but, still do. Yeah. But you get my point. Yeah. So, is this the budget Linus build? No, different uh, different objectives. Yeah. So, similar concept, but far different objectives. Yep. Uh, totally derailed the conversation there. Yeah, you guys just all of a sudden talking no, about my talking lenses. About stuff. <laughs> if you start talking lenses and cameras, I will go lenses and cameras. And then I, I'm just gonna I like can't stop it. Go blank because yeah. I know nothing about cameras and lenses. Yes, exactly. So, uh, well, you, you you know what you know. I know what I I I, I know it's a lens. <laughs> That's right. I know that much. <laughs> I know the word aperture only from playing Portal. <laughs> I, I even have my Kurokesu uh, C920 model with a uh, removable CS Yeah, lens. yeah, we, you showed me that yeah. before. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah. So uh, I actually had to dig this out because this is going to be my macro uh, lens for doing the soldering so you guys can see what I'm doing. Because you can literally touch the object with this lens and uh, and get it in focus. So. Yep. Yep. Why did they order them to stop? Um, to be fair, I didn't read the article. Uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, Miller Lite sued Anheuser-Busch for claiming that or inferring in their advertisement that corn syrup was unhealthy. Uh, by saying we don't add corn syrup and Miller Lite does, mm -hmm. you know, Miller Coors brews with corn syrup, uh, you're inferring that the competitor's product is either dangerous and or unhealthy. Uh, and the reality is Budweiser makes just as unhealthy and just as mediocre of a product. Products, of course. Of course, uh, I think, actually. With very, very similar ingredients and calling out the fact that, well, we didn't use guar gum in our, yeah, in our yeah, mixture. Yeah, yeah. Guar gum's an innocuous compound. Yeah. Corn syrup, by the FDA's definition, is an innocuous compound. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you can say you don't add MSG to something, even though it contains MSG because you didn't add MSG. So there, there's a little bit of, of confluence of language there. But, uh, and you can say sugar because sugar is known as a 
you know, diabetic causer and things right, like that. Right, so there, right. there's, there are some negative connotations with sugar. And so if you have a, a beverage and you want to say no sugar added, that's an allowed phrase to use because you're not adding something that sugar, yeah. could be implied as unhealthy. Yeah, there's ways that they get around it typically, like places that do, oh, it's all fruit juice. Right. Well, yeah, but like 90% of the fruit juice is coming from pears, which is a very high... Or the juice that we added is all fruit juice. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's got other things in it, but the yeah. juice that we added is all fruit juice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a difference between made with 100% fruit juice and 100% fruit juice. Mm -hmm. Did you catch it yes, there? Yes, yeah, yeah. Made with and <laughs> right. then 100%. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, basically it was... Corn syrup is an innocuous product. It's a, it's not a dangerous and or unhealthy product by the view of the FDA. So you cannot use it as an advertising slam against a competitor. And that's exactly what Anheuser-Busch was doing. That's at least the way I interpreted the lawsuit and, and the judgment that was handed down. So. All right. That's, that's a sausage company saying, we don't add beef to our sausages. <laughs> Beef is an innocuous product. Yeah, exactly. So it's 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 that kind of ticky tack thing. Uh, and finally, the gosh, how do I want to phrase this? The liquor return of what Four Loco tried to be. I I guess this is um. Well, it's the uh, it's, it, it's the frattiest of bro drinks. It it surely is. Um, everybody with, with just a side of basic now. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows Jägermeister, right? Everyone knows Jäger. Pretty big frat drink. Jäger shots, Jäger bombs, those type of things. Well, Jägermeister is now coming out with a uh, chocolate coffee cold brew liqueur. Mm -hmm. You want to throw that up there? Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to phrase how I wanted to, to do the transition, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you, you messed me up. Oh! 33%. 10% caffeine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huge, huge caffeine. Now, I don't even know if they'll allow to sell this in Oregon. Right. Because, because we, have, we the, have we have the four local rule. Yeah, we have the, the you can't combine caffeine with, with alcohol type yeah. of the thing. Or I think you can do a little bit or something. Like that. It has to be under a certain percent. It has to be under a certain percent. And it also has to be under a certain percent ABV. Yeah. So I almost guarantee this won't yeah. see the shelf in Oregon. Yeah. Although that could apply to only beer and not necessarily a Maybe. A liqueur I, I don't a... know because typically, I mean, you can shoot this thing, but maybe if you mix it in a cocktail, that brings mm -hmm. the percentage down. And of course, then it becomes acceptable. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, there's nothing stopping people from taking yeah. uh, a Red Bull, which has a lot of caffeine in it, and mixing it with vodka. You can get those at, you know, any bar. But, uh, yeah. Can't can't combine them together at once and then sell it as a product. Yeah. Silly to me, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Soldering. Come on, Jeff. Would you rather I say soldering? Soldering. Soldering. That's always soldering. It's soldering. Yeah, soldering. Yeah. 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 It... it that's the Jeff Giff war. Was I didn't know that was a contention. It's a contention. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was just always just soldering. Yeah. Hmm. And Becky says, "Yay for Jaeger." Okay. <laughs> yeah, my wife likes Jaeger a lot too. I I, I can't get behind Jaeger. Oh. I, I never could. I I've I've done a couple of Jaeger shots. I've done a couple of Jaeger bombs. I've had Jaeger yeah. in cocktails. It's it's one that it's like it's there. Uh, yeah, it's like I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I, it's like I can tolerate it. It's. I don't know, all those weird botanicals that are in there. Yeah. Yeah, vodka Red Bull is not great. Um, I actually kind of like gin Red Bull. Uh, that's a little better. I've never had gin Red Bull. Um, I will say uh, uh, an old uh, next-door neighbor of mine, uh, he was having me repair his computer one mm -hmm. night. He had some weird problem, and he had a project he was trying to get done and whatnot. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's, it's like a Thursday night or a mm -hmm. Wednesday night or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll come over. I'll help out and whatnot. And he goes, you want to drink? I'm like, sure. I'm like, yeah, he's going to bring me like a Miller Lite or, you know, maybe yeah. a, a light IPA or something like that. He brings me like this giant, like a plastic, like conical like, mug. Uh, yeah, like, a, like a big gulp. It's a right. Big, yeah. Filled with vodka and Red Bull. Oh, nice. That'll keep you going. It's like, well, I can't reject it, but Good God. Of, <laughs> it's Wednesday night. <laughs> it's already like 1030. I have to wake up at six. Uh, the, I woke up guarantee I st was still drunk when I woke up. Yeah. Uh, that could, that yeah, was an stuff. awful, awful night. Yeah. 
Have you guys tried four local hard seltzer? No, I have not. No. Maybe maybe John will bring some. We spoke about it. Yeah. John's probably going to bring some at some point. Was that the thirteen percent, or was it? And then Pat yeah, was doing yeah, the seventeen. Yeah. 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 Can never quite keep those straight. I hate Jaeger, but mix Jaeger, Rumple Mints, and Goldschlager, and shake it and strain it to a few sugars. That sounds weird. That that sounds like that sounds like I the, don't know how those would go together. Yeah, that sounds like the tequila and and peppermint schnapps. It sounds dare yeah. That you guys have that we kind of went. Oh, oh, oh maybe yeah. oh, hold on. <laughs> it's like a Mexican toothpaste. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually a really apt description for it. Mm -hmm. With yeah. a cilantro garnish. Yeah, there you go. Put a little lime on it. <laughs> a little lime. It did need a little lime, actually. Yeah. It could have used a little lime. Yeah. Dang you, Joe. Yeah. Joe, if you're out there watching, well, I, you might be out there watching. You're still on the Patreon. So, That's all right. so Joe, okay. here's to you for that uh, shot of Joe. Uh, yeah, I, I can't wrap my head around how those flavors would actually mix. Yeah, I... I, I, I I mean, I'm willing to try it. I'll try anything. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm reeling. That doesn't sound very good to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those ones you go, hey, no. Yeah. Like orange juice and Pepsi. All right, everyone. Beer news begins at 31 minutes. Or tech news begins at 31, 31 minutes. minutes. Excuse 31, me. Yeah. Tech news begins at 31 minutes. Yeah. You can go ahead and comment it now because it's going to be the first comment anyway. Yeah, I know. Uh, AMD uh, was in... We kind of talked about this last yes. week, uh, and and I said let's hold our horses and kind of reserve judgment. This kind of thing kind of happens all the time, and realistically, what are we actually missing? And I'm talking, of course, about the Agisa updates that AMD had been pushing out with BIOS updates for motherboards, that was allegedly lowering the boost clocks uh, that processors would naturally get to. Mm -hmm. So if you were supposed to get to a or if you were supposed to level out at a max boost clock of 4.3, maybe you were getting 4.25 or maybe 4.2. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was impacting performance, but minuscule percentages. Very small. Uh, very yeah. small. And and we were covering it very early. I think we were one of the first live shows to cover it. Uh, and, and I said, let's just kind of see how this all plays out. Let's not break the pitchforks out of the closet just yet. Yeah. Calm down. Let's, let's see what this actually is. <laughs> Um, so it turns out AMD was in fact, uh, throttling, uh, lowering the, the boost speed for Ryzen 3000 systems. And they, they were affecting, uh, B450 motherboards and Zen 2 processors at mm -hmm. the same time. Um, it was only 50 to hundred megahertz. It was not a drastic change. But people started saying, oh, you need to put a sticker on the box and class action lawsuit. Oh, and all yeah, this, yeah. All this, like, screaming whoa, already. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah, hold on. So the original story was that AMD was making these changes for longevity sake of the processor. It, it's essentially ensuring that the processor would last its full lifespan rather right. than being cut slightly short. Won't fry itself out, basically. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, Anyway, uh, quoting Tom's hardware here, after an extended period of silence, AMD has finally publicly acknowledged that some of its customers aren't receiving the expected boost frequencies from AMD 3000 series. Uh, the statement below, uh, and basically they said um, that as of September 10th, we are going to be issuing a uh, BIOS update which will fix uh, the expected boost frequencies. Um, the boost frequencies were basically calculated via a series of variables. It was temperature. It was available power draw. Mm -hmm. uh, there were there were other concerns. There was VRM concerns, VRM temperature and power draw concerns. Um, and basically what this was, was AMD playing it a little bit more conservatively than they thought they would out of the gate. And as a result, like I said, you missed a couple of percentage points. Not a um, huge thing. Right. I guess people who are like really going for that score, right. that high score. Right. Now, Der Bauer did make a video about this in which he did a, a survey to his YouTube followers, which asked him, or which he asked to say, are you reaching the expected boost frequency of your Ryzen third gen chip? Mm -hmm. um, and only 5.6% said they were able to reach the advertised boost clocks. I take that with a grain of salt because while 
a large number of users are very intelligent people and know exactly the inner workings yeah. of their system. Even those who watch Dear Bauer may not know entirely what they're talking about. And and if they see an all-core turbo of 4.1, but the box says 4.3, they're going to check no. Yeah. Well, the single boost frequency was 4.3. The all-core turbo may have been 4.2 or 4.1. And if they're hitting 4.1, then they're reaching the advertised the actual frequency. Advertised frequency yeah. And the other thing is bring up like a, a program like Hardware Info, uh, HW Info 64, mm -hmm. and see what the max single core or single thread gets to. And if it's 4.3, you've reached the advertised boost clock. That's all that's supposed to mean is that's the max we will go to mm -hmm. without overclocking. Yeah. Um, and so... I he he did a great job with the survey, but I I for one am taking those results with a little bit of a grain of salt, especially judging by my YouTube comment section whenever I do any kind of a benchmark. Right. Especially CPU <clears throat> related. Yes. Uh I'm always wrong. There's nothing I can say otherwise. <laughs> uh so bottleneck. So like I said, I uh, I really appreciate him doing that survey. I think there there is a lot of fantastic information that came out of that and a lot of great statements. And whether or not AMD was doing it maliciously or purposefully, I don't think I, it was malicious. I don't think it was malicious either. They, I don't. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly wasn't a malicious action, but maybe it was a slight conservative action and all of a sudden people started looking at those numbers and going, well, why does mine only say 4.1? Yeah. When the box says 4. Well, that's still by design. And, and if they don't understand, then AMD has to compensate. Yeah. And, and again, maybe it was on purpose. Maybe it was completely accidental and the, and the, the formula just got tweaked over the course tweaked of time. Bit, yeah. And all of a sudden, the 5.6% of people who would know exactly what was going on or the 30 or 35% of people who know exactly what their CPU is doing at all times inside their box and what it's actually designed to do, maybe they started taking a closer look and going, hey, we're 50 megahertz shot here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. Th thank you. I was you, just Skull. gonna say, like, <laughs> thank you for the correction. That's, that's one of that's one of Jeff's trigger words. Yes, uh, bottlenecking. bottlenecking. Yeah, bottleneck. Yeah. It's a bottleneck. The RX five eighty was bottlenecking your yeah. Ryzen five thirty yeah. six hundred. Like hell, it was. <laughs> Shut up. You don't know what the term means, so stop no. using it. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> there's there's swear counter number two. <laughs> if, if you consider that one a swear. Uh, Anyway, so regardless of whether this was on purpose or accidental or just happenstance, AMD is releasing a GISA code on September 10th that will reboost those numbers mm -hmm. back to, to pre-release numbers. Yeah. Um, so AMD uh, doing the right thing. Uh, uh, by the way, the AMD boost thing, Der Bauer ran a survey that tested over 1,000 CPUs in the wild with single boost performance. And, and, and I understand that but how many of those 1,000 know how to read those charts and know how to read their benchmark software mm. and, and whatnot? Yeah. Or, uh, and I wasn't sure if Der Bauer uh, sent them a test to run and then send him a dump of the data. That, that'd be an interesting thing. I, I don't remember his methodology. Um, but uh, if it was left up to the users checking a yes or a no box, huh. I... I, I'm not sure. Yeah, history would tell that there's a class session allowed to take seven years and everyone will get a $20 rebate because of the false advertising. Right. Yeah, I think I got, I think I finally got, what was it, my 10, no, it was, it was like 25 bucks or something like that yeah. for the, the uh, yeah. NVIDIA 970. You got, yeah, you, uh, I got one for the, the 9700 is what it was. No, it was, there was, a, there was one for the 970 too. Oh, that you, oh yeah, your 3.5 versus yeah, 4. Yeah, it was 3.5 versus 4. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. Wow, that, that actually turned right around. That was only four years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, it took a while though. Still, yep. but yep. it it because uh, uh, yeah, there was me. the there was the nine thousand series of Nvidia processors, specifically the mold processors, which had the same problem as the Xbox three hundred and sixty. Yes, where uh, they used really really cheap grade high yep. tin solder that and would it melt, it very melt very quickly, quickly and it overheat. And yep, yeah. um, <clears throat> and yeah, Wendell was the one who found that they set the thermal threshold at 75C and the boost dropped 100 megahertz or less. And that's that was exactly my point, is where is this thermal threshold at and how much performance did we actually lose? Mm -hmm. And are we actually losing performance? And honestly, is anyone going to notice 100 megahertz on a 4.2 versus 4.3? No. Probably not. Unless you're looking at the numbers, but even then, probably not. It's not like we're all of a sudden throttling down to the base clock right, or something right. like that. 
It was 50 to 100 megahertz, which you can flip a coin so, based so the, on. So the, what was it, the 1%? I, I lose think? more than that because it raises 5 degrees in my room. Yeah. Yeah. So so people with better cooling really didn't probably experience it yeah. as much, maybe? I don't know. Exactly. So, again, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how uh, Der Bauer did his measurements, and someone's saying uh, Jeff either doesn't like Steve's pineapple milkshake or is talking too much. He's talking too much. I'm talking a lot. Yeah. I am talking a lot. Um, and I gave him more, too. But regardless, yeah. I, I have the taller glass, remember. Yes. Uh, but regardless, AMD is issuing a fix September 10th. I was trying to wrap up, and you guys kept distracting <laughs> me with bottlenecking and lens talk. Bottlenecks. Yeah. He's bottleneck. He's got bottleneck. I'm going to do a, a cover song of Elvis's rubbernecking and just change it to bottlenecking just for you. <laughs> You, Steve. Yeah, there you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do a uh, Weird Al trigger happy. <laughs> uh, it is really good beer, and Thank it's you. not and it's not getting worse as uh, as no, it gets warmer. No, no, it's, and it it it, it just, it's it actually getting it. a little sweeter yeah. as it gets warmer. I polish my. I can wait. I can. I can. I can pause. I'm almost there. Okay, you're I'm almost there. there. You're getting there. Yep. Uh, why don't you introduce the next one? Uh, we'll, okay. Uh, oh, the next beer. Next beer. Okay, we're gonna do the You've Got Ale. It's a hazy IPA by Matchless. Actually, I think it's a collaboration. Collaboration with uh, with uh, Browers Brewing. Browers Brewing. Yeah. yeah. So it's a collaboration with Matchless and Browers. Um, I think I looked it up on Untapped before it came over. It got almost like a I think a three point eight nine average. Almost a four. So, but it's a hazy. And it's got, uh, what do we got? Uh, Amarillo, Simcoe, Citra, Comet, Galaxy Hops. Mm -hmm. So, all the good ones are in there. Should have nice, nice citrus flavor to it. It's got two of the, two of the, uh, yeah, Amarillo and Citra. Yeah, yep. the two that I use. So, give this one a shot. Oh, it smells good. It doesn't smell as good as mine, but yeah. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Much more hoppy. Yeah, well, it lot, is a hazy. Lot, lot, lot less fruit. Yeah. Much, much more. Much more hop. Very hop forward. Yes. Ooh, still, that pour right still there. a citrusy hop, but yeah. Oh, I overdid it just a little bit. So it is perfect. I got like a little splash left. There we go. Mm. Use the four, Steve. No, that's pretty good. Yep. It's not like um, super acidic. Um, I mean, I'm as I'll drink it, I'll figure it out. Right. But it doesn't seem like it's super harsh. It's not very hazy either. It's, no, it's not. not I at think all. it's about as hazy as mine was. I was about to go to the second camera. I didn't. I stopped myself. <laughs> so. We haven't got the echo fixed. Yeah, halfway. Yeah. No echo. So here, look, it's not super hazy. Sorry, the uh, the lens is out of focus all the way over there. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it's um, not. It's not. Ooh. It's not really beating you over the head with the hops. Yeah. Um, I can see. I mean, again, time will tell because we've had lots of hazies before, mm -hmm. and then, like you said, there's that acid burn. This yeah. one does not feel like it's going to have that. But we'll see. I disagree. I think you it's going to have some acid okay. burn. All right. Yep. I can already feel it right okay. there. Just way, way back there. Well, maybe a little more sensitive I, to it than I am. But, yeah. But it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be that way to me. But we'll see. I have a long way to go. No. <laughs> all right. Because I know you guys love it when I say all right. And all right. Hands. No, you got to do the all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. There you go. Okay, AMD, uh, according to uh, Forbes, yep. AMD keeps dominating with its Ryzen 5 3600 and is close to overtaking Intel's entire CPU sales with the Ryzen 5 3600. Yeah, just with that. I mean, we, we all predicted that AMD was going to be overtaking Intel yes. very quickly. Yeah. Uh, we didn't think it was going to be this bad of a beating. Or this immediate. Yeah, this immediate, too. Right. Yeah, it's it's a uh, very quick and swift smack. Uh, cheers and greetings from Germany. 
How's it going? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, these chips launched two months ago. They launched sep- yeah. July 7th. Yeah. And, and here we are on September well, 4th. Well, I think there was a huge amount of people waiting yes. for them to come out to, and to see the performance uh, and then to buy. Mm-hmm. So there, I think there was just a huge amount of people just yep. waiting for it. Uh, anyway, this uh, this information from Forbes comes courtesy of Mind Factory, which is a German retailer, which is really uses a litmus test for what the industry as a whole is doing as yeah. far as hardware sales. Um, we've uh, we've mentioned Mind Factory quite a bit. They're usually within a percentage point or two of the global marketplace. Um, it's it's a really interesting uh, dichotomy between the t- yeah. <laughs> between the oh, two. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, AMD managed to bag seventy nine percent of all CPU shipment sales through Mind Factory. That's insane. Uh, which left Intel with only 22%. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and the sales of uh, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600, uh, does it give the exact number? It doesn't. They don't say how close. Naturally, they left 22% of units sold in August. And once again, AMD wasn't far off to overtake sales of the entire range of CPUs with one single Ryzen product, except this time the chip with uh, which manages the feet was a different one. Okay, so last month it was the 3700X. This month it's the, the 3600, 3600X. Uh, which is the the, the low-end chip. Uh, and it's the chip that I, I recently reviewed. And in fact, I do have a build coming up here in the next week or so mm-hmm. that's going to be a Ryzen 5 3600 build uh, with likely an AMD uh, RX 5700. So... Stay nice. tuned. Stay tuned for that build in a brand new case, a uh, case you guys have never seen before. So, or hopefully you haven't seen before. I'm hoping to be one of the first out out of the gate with it. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, we knew the hammer was going to drop, but but again, this fast and this hard, it dropped Ooh. quickly. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah, I mean, it it was. I it, thought it was going to be evident. Around Christmas time, yeah. you know when the when you know the sales happen, but yeah, man, just being within the first two months, that's that's pretty good. Well, I've bought two of them myself. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I got I got my eyes on a few of them. I'm starting to build my my next upgrade. Yeah, and uh, the Ryzen five is on on that list. So. Yeah, because you're still on Haswell, right? Yes. yes yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, I seven. He's got eight threads. Uh, yeah, Don't I know. Judge. It's still, Don't it's still fine. Yeah, it's still fine. <laughs> um. There was a comment today in my my 3600 upgrade that someone was still looking for a worthy CPU to upgrade from his lowly i7 7700K. Uh, that CPU is <laughs> two on. years old. Come That's, on, bro. Come on. That's not that old. Come on, bro. And yeah. what game can't you play? I know. Which, by the way... I mean, my, my CPU is pretty old, yeah. but I do have a new GPU. I, I had to get it because my old, my old 970 fried. But, uh, yeah... So today in the Discord, I actually, uh, uh, speaking of that guy's comment and what can't you play, uh, I, I introduced kind of a new idea for a video that I wanted to float out there, and that's what is the lowest spec computer that I can build that can still play every modern game? Right. Um, and, and at a reasonable tick, and, and no setting is off limits. So I want to play it at like a 45 FPS average. Uh-huh. Um, but if 1080, I find, 1080p, right? You can't go down to... To, to 720? I'll, I'll lower it to 720. Okay. Or maybe 900p right. or something like yeah. that. You know, make the tweaks and make it playable. How, how far down are you willing to go? Like, you're going to take the graphics down to low 720. We'll, we'll, take, it, it's... <laughs> we'll take it We'll take it. low 1080. We'll start there, uh-huh. and we'll see where it goes. Yeah. But uh, if, if you guys don't remember, about two years ago, um, I did a review with, uh, you know, how do you build a $200 gaming PC and it was an i5 3570 mm-hmm. in a, an HP low or small form factor case with a GT 1030. I averaged 90 FPS in GTA 5 at 1080p. Really? Yeah. At low settings. Low settings, yeah. Right. I mean, so it's going to look like the original Xbox 360. But version 90 of the FPS. Still, that's really good. Yeah. With a low of 58. Yeah. Like, and, and so I really want to explore that concept because my... My inbox is inundated every time I do benchmarks. Uh, either I did it wrong, or my opinion is wrong on what is playable. Oh, you know, I, I can't stand anything less than 90. Yeah. Get over yourself, that's, bro. That's and your preference, though. We all we all love looking at the numbers and benchmarking yeah. and, oh, and, yeah. and, and drag racing our PCs. Yes. 
But at the end of the day, we're building them either to do work, in which case if they're doing work, I want absolute peak performance. Mm -hmm. If they're playing games, I want to play the dang game. Yeah. And I want to get lost in the game. And did we put Breath of the Wild away because it was 900p and 25 FPS? No, I played the crap out of that game. <laughs> Same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 on my Xbox One, which was like 25 FPS and 720p. Was it that bad? It was that bad. Oh my god. It was stuttery as crap. Oh. But you know what? I've got like 45, 50 hours into that game. Never cared. Yeah. Never cared because yeah. the game is that good. Yeah. And and so I really well, want to get over this. Well, there's there's a reason why you got a lot of these indie games now that don't mm -hmm. have the big budgets and the high-end graphics mm -hmm. that are still super popular. Right. There's tons of those games out there. Right yeah. Now. Uh, there was a tweet sent out that the most popular games of 2019... Two of them were made in 2009. One of them was a 2012. The most recent was a 2017. Yeah. And those were the most played games yeah. of, of the oh, year. Yeah. And so it, it's actually kind of a trend, and especially with retro gaming being as big as it has oh, yeah. been as of late. Yeah. Um, you know, not needing a, a beast of a machine. Heck, a, a lot of indie games, you can almost play on integrated graphics. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, some, some, yeah. I, I when, mean, when you get into the pixel art and the and, and those kind of things, yeah. the, the eight bit retro games, yeah, you can those play are it on fun. an, those are on fun. an Yeah, you can do it on whatever. I mean, well, even nowadays, because they have, I don't know if you guys talked about it or not, but they have the uh, ray tracing for Minecraft coming out. Mm -hmm. That's going to require a bit of. of that's going to require a little. Yeah, it's going to. Yeah, it's going to have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I I want to do a video on stop just trying to drag race your CPU and stop making it a, a, a macho manly man PC build. Right. So what's a good budget build? And just build play the yeah. game. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, uh, do you know what I did when I was building my server this last week? I threw up Diddy Kong Racing on an emulator on my Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and, and, Diddy Kong Racing. And, and so, and, and I played that for like four hours. And and it didn't even play as good as it did on the on the Nintendo sixty four. Right, right. Uh, and I still played it for four hours because it was something to do and it kept my attention. And you know what? I didn't care that it was frame dipping because I didn't let myself care. I just played the dang game. And so I I think there's too much chest bumping and and machoism in right. in PC hardware. And I kind of want to dial it back just a little bit. To why are we building these PCs? Mm -hmm. If you want to build it to, to drag race, by all means, do that. go nuts. I'm an enthusiast just well, as much as you guys. There are. are several people who want to just get into PC gaming mm -hmm. and they want like a really cheap budget build. And mm -hmm. if you can find a good two hundred dollar build, that's right. That's really good. But but when the PC community is saying ah the sixteen sixty is crap, sixteen sixty plays any game you want at seventy five FPS. Yeah, any game. Yeah. You name a game, I will play it at seventy five FPS. Might not be ultra settings, but it'll be seventy five FPS. So well, we got some we got some positive feedback. So yeah, yeah maybe. So yeah, it. Um, I mean, my daughter plays on a ten fifty Ti and plays Minecraft at ninety FPS at ten eighty p. Yeah, and yeah. As like I said, this doesn't take much to push Minecraft right, right now because like I know, like I got nieces and nephews that come over. I got these right. crappy old laptops I can throw up there. Minecraft still runs on it. Mm -hmm. I still play it. Yep. Hopefully I'll have a server that can, can do six of those here. Yes, there you go. Months. Yes, I know. We'll see how that goes. Jeff, <laughs> you know you can play Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi. I know! <laughs> <laughs> Which would probably be cheaper. That's not the point! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, AMD overtaking Intel. Sorry for the tangent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, it's a tangent. We'll come back. Yeah. Uh, I know I'm talking a lot. Steve's going to get a lot more talking here in about five to ten minutes because we're going to dive into game news. Yeah. So we're, that's my strong suit. That's right. So we're we're kind of getting through the nitty gritty of the tech. It's really all AMD and all Intel this week. There's there was nothing else for tech news. Yeah. Unless I want to talk about an Apple card case that you can buy now, made out of wood for like a hundred. The less bucks. we talk about Apple, the better. Right. Uh, and and there were a couple other things, but nothing really that piqued my interest enough mm -hmm. to. To delve into so uh intel uh rumored to be producing a new socket for their upcoming ice lake sp and uh, cooper lake sp processors uh these are their single and dual processor systems that will be on 10 nanometer uh so enthusiast and server software more towards the server right. software side yep. of things or, i said software twice hardware software, then software yeah yeah um 
And uh, the brand new socket kind of makes Threadripper look small. It does. It looks quite beefy. When I first saw these pictures, I was like, is this a new mount for an SSD? And like, it it's about like the it. same dang yeah, size. It looks like it, right? It looks like it. <laughs> Intel's all new two and a half inch CPU. Yeah. Uh, so the all new 4189 5 socket. Uh, is going to be the new standard. Now, there are two different variations of the socket. There's the Dash 4 and the Dash 5. And the differences come in, uh, not in the pin layout. The pins are absolutely identical. It's mm -hmm. the electrical connectivity and where the pins actually go. Um, so the socket P4, as the 4189-4 uh, socket is known as, um, is going to be a, uh, is it a, Trying to keep this straight. Uh, socket P4 will house up to a 26 or 28 core, I think. Ah, crap, now I got my numbers mixed up. Uh, anyway, one of them will house a 28 core CPU, the other will house a 56 core CPU. One of them will have four memory channels, the other will have six, or maybe it's six and eight. Um, so there's a slight electrical difference between the two, and we have confirmed that they will support PCIe 4.0 as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, so kind of big news coming on Intel server side, as long as they can get 10 nanometer chips to support it. Yeah. Um, this could be finally the, you know, we, we make fun of Intel for the tick, 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 or the plus, plus, plus. This yeah. could finally be a talk that kind of, Take some, take some a little bit more competitive. At least tourniquets the bleeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because trust me, Epic is doing well. Yeah. Epic 7 nanometer in the first month of release, it is doing well. They need to do something quick. Yep. Intel does. Um, and, and Intel, quite honestly, doesn't give two craps about the gamers. It's, it's their bread and butter is server. Yeah. And, and... Epic is chipping away at that. And AMD doesn't give two craps about the gamers either. Their bread and butter wants to be server. Yes, they do. Because uh, that's and, where the real money's at. Right. And and those are the people who go like, yeah, I'll spend a billion dollars on some new Epic. Yeah, board, yeah. Oh, on yeah. some new Epic servers. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that's where their revenue makes or breaks. Um, and the fact that AMD is looking to not only erode that slightly, but literally take it over in the next yeah. two years, that is concerning for Intel. Yeah. Uh, so I imagine Intel is going to put all of its all of its eggs into a 10 nanometer yep. basket that hopefully looks like a 4189 compatible yes, <laughs> socket. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, they want to hold on to that server market for all it's worth. Yes, because it's worth it's worth a lot. A lot. And that's and it is. It's their bread and butter. Yep. it really is. And speaking of Intel not caring about gamers. Uh -huh. uh, I kid, they do. It's a different division, though. Right. Uh, uh, so, Intel, qu uh, quite famously, I'll say, go ahead and jump one slide forward. I'll, I'll, I want to start with start this, this first, one. and then we'll kind of work our way back. All right. Let's uh, see so, we're going to go here. here. Oh, that's right. It's. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It hey, came, we got it. It came up. It came up. Tom's hardware worked. Yay. Yeah. Um, so, Intel, quite famously at this point, in Computex 2018, brought out a s demo core, which turned out to be the 3175X, their 28-core yeah. beastly, beastly yeah. overclockable yeah. enthusiast Xeon to, to beat all comers. Yeah, wasn't that the one they were like refrigerated cooling? I <laughs> think, yeah. They might have been. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly, yeah. there was some, uh, some sub-ambient cooling going yeah. on. Uh, oh, yeah. They couldn't demo it in the hotel room because the hotel room only had a single 30-amp circuit in it. <laughs> uh, allegedly. Yep. Allegedly. allegedly. Um, so, anyway, Intel trots out onto stage and demos this 28-core beast, the 3175X, running at 5 gigahertz with no other information. Yeah. Okay. With just, we have a 28-core CPU that's capable of 5, five gigahertz. gigahertz. Yeah. And and that was their announcement for the year. They had nothing else. Yep. Like, 9900K was a glimmer in their eye yeah. come and November. It was, and it was all theoretical, too. Right. right. Yeah. Um, and as it turns out, it needed, you know, a little bit of exotic it, cooling. Yeah, it, yeah it, wasn't, it wasn't quite ready for prime time. All right. Yeah. So if you scroll down to the next picture, Steve, just scroll the down just a little yeah, bit. Right. There you go. There we go. 
Uh, they also famously benchmarked this with Cinebench. Well, Cinebench. Yeah. Cinebench R15. The standard CPU benchmark yes. to see relative performance of a CPU against all of its competitors. Um, the reason Cinebench is looked at as kind of the de facto standard is it is repeatable and it is scalable. Yep. It doesn't matter how many cores or how many threads, it scales almost equally regardless of what you have, what, yeah, it and it, it scales equally with the power of your individual CPU mm -hmm. cores. And so you get really, really close to what the actual performance of a CPU will be in almost any circumstance by running Cinebench, which is uh, Cinema 4D's basically render workload. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a pre-programmed Cinema 4D render. Um, ray tracing, if you do. Yeah, know. it's basically ray tracing. It's ray tracing. That's basically what it is. Um, uh, using uh, AVX encoding. Uh, so Intel trots out on the stage, has a five gigahertz chip, and says, uh, it runs Cinebench faster than just about anything else that's ever been created. Any questions? And everyone went, how did you get five gigahertz? And they said, don't look under the cable. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ignore the wizard behind right, the curtain. Right. Well, a year later, uh, a curious thing happened. Zen 2 came out, and started kicking their butt in Cinebench ratings. Yeah. And then later on, Zen 3 came out, uh, or sorry, Zen, Zen Plus came out and started beating them in Cinebench rankings. And then Zen 2, so Ryzen 3000 series yeah. came out and actually beat them in Cinebench yeah, ratings. Beat the, beat the crap out uh, of them. Yeah. Beat them and beat them straight up. Um, to which Intel replied at, the, uh, at Computex 2019, so one year later after they trotted that onto the stage, they said, we have some 10 watt. 10 nanometer mobile chips that are coming out. We have some, uh, the 9900KS, so a, a five gigahertz all core turbo. Uh, and we don't think Cinebench is a valid benchmark. Any questions? Yeah. And that was their <laughs> press conference. Yep. They're like basically dissing, dissing Cinebench now. Right. Yep. Uh, so, and, and they kind of did it a little tongue in cheek at, uh, at Computex. Um, because uh, if you go, that goes, this one here. Uh, yes, yeah. and scroll down to the next picture. There you go. To uh, so this picture here, uh, they had this slide that said "real world results, not really." And what does the desktop desktop segment do? Uh, they do office applications. They do gaming with with Steam and and CS:GO and League of Legends and GTA Five. Uh -huh. And they do media consumption inside of VLC. And they do light content creation with Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere, and After Effects. Yeah. And they do game streaming with OBS. And uh, yeah, they put Cinebench at the bottom. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, the, the reason being is because they were losing in Cinebench. Yeah. So you notice uh, Cinebench, or Cinema 4D as an application, is only used on 0.54% of desktop use cases. Right. Only 0.54% actually use Cinema 4D for a regular workflow. And what they argued is that, well, 63% of the world uses Chrome when they're using their desktop, and 17% use Outlook, and 21% use VLC. Those are the yeah, benchmark but, numbers we should yeah, be using. Yeah, but, but no, that is okay. There's a reason why there's a specific set of software for doing benchmarking. Right. Because workloads on Chrome vary from what you're browsing to what you're doing. There's there's variations of... There's oh, don't tell the Edge team that with their JavaScript and oh, <laughs> compiler. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I struck a nerve yeah. with Steve there. <laughs> no, I don't use Edge at all. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's like this... They have, they have to have a standard set to actually compare apples to mm -hmm. apples instead of comparing apples to oranges, right? That's how you do it. That's why you have to have benchmarking utilities. Right. Yeah. And then the whole point of a benchmark is not necessarily to say people are running Cinema 4D encoding. Yeah, coding. that's not it. It's to say Cinema 4D's renderer almost perfectly scales CPUs in the results that we see in almost every other benchmark. Yeah. And, and it's one benchmark that I can run and know where it's going to slot in. I have a, a, a Cinebench R15 uh, benchmark table uh, of which I've benchmarked personally close to 100 CPUs. And, uh, and so I know when I benchmark a CPU where it's going to fall in my benchmark suite. And I have both my stock results and my overclock results in that yep. same table. Mm -hmm. And so I can benchmark a new CPU that I get and go, oh, look, it's going to com compete with, a, with an Intel 
i5-8400. Sweet. We know exactly where it slots into the product lineup. I know what to pair it with for a GPU. I know what RAM to pair it with now. Yeah. I know what segment it's supposed to slot into as far as performance goes. We're good. Yeah. And, and that's the point of a good, accurate benchmark. And Cinebench is a good, accurate benchmark. The one knock on it was that uh, under uh, uh, the Cinebench R15, the CPUs got so powerful, they were staying under full boost uh, load okay. the entire duration of Cinebench R15's mm -hmm. test. So they quadrupled the length of the test yeah. in Cinebench R20, and they fixed a couple other bugs as well. Uh, and so now Cinemage R20 is kind of the new standard. And again, you're going to get scalable results for a number of number years. Of year, yeah, for a long time. Out of this, out of this mm -hmm. thing. Um, anyway, at a recent, uh, recent interview, Intel kind of doubled down. Um, and, uh, and or, or sorry, they contradicted themselves with Cinemage not being a, a, an important real world benchmark. Um, so... Uh, Intel came out and said uh, um, that Cinema 4D is only used in 0.22% of the mobile user market, and that's probably accurate. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, there's, I can't imagine there's too many 3D designers or ray tracers that, that are using mobile. That are on yeah. a. Yeah. There's a couple out there, but but not really. Um, and uh, anyway, they found that the. Uh, the reason Intel is kind of backing up in what it said with, well, it's not a real world result, is the i9-7980XE reduced uh, load time from a specific AMD chip from 16 to nine minutes or, or 19 to six minutes. Uh, and so Intel goes, oh, it is a valid benchmark because we won again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Change, changing the rules to make it fit their uh, right, so they they can win right. Yeah. So this is why, as reviewers, when we tell you to wait for third party benchmarks, why That's we tell why. you to wait yeah. for third party benchmarks. Yeah. And uh, in fact, uh, this article on Tech Gauge even brought up uh, the whole debacle with the 9900K launch and Principal Technologies doing Intel sanctioned benchmarks with eight different systems with questionable, we'll call it settings and results on the AMD yeah. based systems and really kind of flexing the muscle of the Intel uh, systems purposefully and and two weeks ahead of reviews being, or review embargoes being released, being able to be released yeah. by, by reviewers. Um, so, you know, Intel had the press conference that said the 9900K is the best gaming CPU ever. And then a day later, a principal technologies review drops that says, yes, the, the Intel 9900K is, is literally the best CPU we've ever ran across. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, it's 550 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a little bit, it's a little steep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and why didn't your 2700X come within the 5% yeah. it should have? Uh, well, we, we tested it the way Intel told us to, and, and we found like a 20% difference in games. Three games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the three right. games. Yeah, right. So, anywho, uh, wait for real world testing and mm -hmm. wait for review testing is is really what we always say. And, and reasons like this are why yeah. it's always fair. Yeah, and not it's to leave fair. AMD out of this, they've been totally guilty of this in the past. And as never, well. never get, never get hooked on the marketing hype. Jeff isn't drinking again. Well, you know what? The reason I'm not drinking again is because we have like half of a story left. The i9-9900KS launches in October. You can finally get Yay. that five gigahertz boost Yep. that you could have gotten by just setting it to 5.0 in your, the, the stepper to 5.0 yep. in your BIOS and calling it a day. Yep. They're just releasing a chip that basically has that on all cores now. That's right. That's all it's doing. It'll automatically boost to 5.0 instead of 4.7. And they don't have it listed what the price is going to be. Yep. And and <laughs> it's what, high. Yeah. <laughs> why why they have the 9900K and 9900KF as the same price? I don't know. Why why do they do that? Yep. That that just boggles my mind. Anyway. Yep. But uh, yeah, the KS is coming next month. Five gigahertz. And we're on to gaming news. On to gaming news. On to gaming Move news. On. Uh, so we have a couple of Valve stories to start us. Yes, we do. You added this one. I did. This was. Late breaking? Yes. Well, I mean, it's not late breaking 
a lot of people knew about this. It's right. up and coming, but this is an actual definitive date. Yes. When it's going to drop, I think back in June, uh, maybe even earlier, June, or maybe even before June, mm -hmm. Valve announced that they are doing a big uh, revamp of the Steam, the user, user interface for Steam. Uh, and they said it was coming within weeks, which it's... We're yeah. still within yeah, weeks. So I guess, I mean, technically weeks... It's from from two to uh, fourteen weeks is still I guess. weeks. Yeah, you know, a thousand weeks is still technically weeks. Fifty two right? is just one year. Yeah, who's it's counting? True. Who's counting? Who's right? counting? Weeks is weeks. But anyway, uh, they finally said that the beta for the new Steam library and interface is going to begin September seventeenth. Yep. So if you are, uh, in fact, you can just go up into Steam into the settings and you can click. You know, join I, the beta. I, I want to join the beta. Yep. You can also get this uh, new user interface on the seventeenth. Yep. And uh, if you look at it here, uh, it's very almost Plex interface looking. I was going to say it reminds right? me a lot of Plex. It does. It's got you got your your categories on the side here, or your your list of games and search and uh, the thumbnails over here on the on the other side. Um, but there's it's going to come with a whole list of new features. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main ones is there's going to, and that, this is the one I'm most excited about, is they put events in there. So uh, developers are able to update events for particular games, and then those will bubble up to your library and say, hey, these are the events that are happening okay. for this game that is in your library. Hey, we're having a League of Legends tournament. Exactly. On, yeah. Well, not necessarily League of Legends, that's not Steam, but it's that idea. Yeah there's, yeah. yeah, there's a CSGO tournament on, so you know, CSGO is going to be at the top. Uh, <laughs> Send your hate mail below. <laughs> I'm used to it. Uh, uh, there's also like this I is what this me. is what your friends are playing more frequently. Yeah. I think there's also a, an entry in there that says how many people are playing a particular game right there on the interface, mm -hmm. so you know that's like oh I want to play this game. Uh, hey, there's two hundred thousand in the lobby. Let's yeah, do this. yeah, let's do this. But there's other times it's like uh, you know I've, I've played games where like there's like three people playing right. Mm -hmm. So um, that's going to help a lot too. Events is going to be great. There's supposedly a lot more um, ways to categorize everything, so you'd be able to filter stuff down, uh, and then save those filters, and keep that and mark that as a category for yourself. So you could basically apply filters to a certain thing and put them in a category and save that category so you can recall it later. So it's ways to organize your library a lot better. People like me who have a couple thousand games in their library already, it's going to help organize everything together. And uh, I think there was going to be, I said events, I said that. that the, yeah, already going to be events. Yeah, the labs is going to be uh, micro trailers, which is a new thing. Oh. Where uh, they basically take a quick glimpse of, of different screenshots and different parts of a trailer and give you a six second glimpse of the game. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get a real quick idea of what it looks like instead of having to watch a whole trailer. Um, Steam Labs has some other stuff in here that's well, you can go in and read about it. We'll have a link on there. But there's a lot of good stuff coming. Um, so if you're excited, like I'm excited, about the new interface, yeah. the 18th, it's coming. So sign up. Mark yourself down for the beta. Hooray. If you want to see it. I'll probably go give it a once over. Oh, no, no. I'm definitely doing it. I'm, I'm, already, yeah. in the, I'm already in the Steam beta, so I get all the uh, frequent updates. Nice. I got the, the updated chat update before everybody else did. And, uh, nice. All right. Uh, also in Valve news today um, is Valve issued an update to the lab, their VR title, in-house VR title, a couple of days ago. Yep. And it was discovered to have some interesting material yeah, inside of that's it. That's right. So um, Valve Lab is surprisingly written in Unity, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so Unity, the primary language in Unity is C Sharp. And there's lots of utilities out there for C-sharp where you can decompile stuff. Yeah. So they just took and decompiled it and was like looking at basically the code that was in there and mm -hmm. they found a ton of references to a VR Half-Life. Yes. Uh, so this has been long rumored yeah. to be happening. Uh, we do know there is probably a Half-Life title coming to VR uh, inside of Steam and fr from Valve. Uh, and the rumor is that it's likely to be a prequel to the events from the first Half-Life. Uh, so you, you play as Gordon before his time in, in the mining colony and, and before his time getting into... I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case because there's mention of Dog in there and Dog doesn't get introduced until the second one. It's true. So it, 
from from what I've read about it, it's supposed to be like a um, training room type of holodeck mm -hmm. type of a thing. That might be what it is. Okay. From what I've heard. Yeah. Because uh, I, I I did I didn't read this particular article, but then when the news dropped yesterday, I watched quite a few videos and stuff on this. Yeah. And that's what what people who were looking at the raw code were interpreting it as. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And it looks like you just start out, uh, you don't have a full weaponry, at least what they found wasn't reference to a full weaponry. You have yeah. pistols, dual-wielding pistols, and I think you have a couple of other guns, but... Um, Gotta have a crowbar. They didn't say anything about a crowbar. Gotta have a crowbar. They didn't say anything yeah. about a crowbar. Maybe they will, but, you know, this is obviously just speculation because it's just obviously leftover code that wasn't supposed to be there. Right. Who knows how old it is? Uh, who knows if it's part of a finished product? It's mm -hmm. all speculation because it's not running. They're just mm -hmm. looking at the code. Um, and of there's course, there's no binary. There's no executable. Right. There's, there's no, no there's no anything. And it's and it's just the code. So there's no comments on it. It's decompiled code. So when you yeah. compile the code, they strip out all the comments. There's no comments in yeah. there. Um, so it's just decompiled code. There there's tags of what files it's supposed to be looking at. And right. What it's supposed to be doing with those yes, files. Yes. Exactly. And so you know you can get a little glimpse of things by name the names of the functions and the subroutines and stuff like that. But yep. For the most part, it's all speculation. And it doesn't really know how old it is. But it does confirm that there is a Half-Life VR in the right. works. The other option this could be is a Half-Life holodeck VR module is coming to the lab. Yeah, exactly. It, it could be it's a, it's another headset you put on or another one right, you teleport right. to. And they did that with, with um, uh, Portal, too. They had like a little yeah. thing where you could put the... A VR thing where you put the the you put Atlas back together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or actually, you take Atlas apart yeah. more more accurately. Spoiler alerts. Uh, it's been three years. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I actually really dug the heck out of the uh, the the robot repair. Yeah. The, the Atlas robot yeah. repair. Um, because uh, you get to hear from Gladys again. You yeah. get to you know kind of experience in real scale what that's like. Right. And, Gladys is a lot bigger than you think she is. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. There's a reason why she's an intimidating enemy, right? Right. Uh, she is certainly not a not a potato. I'll say that much. <laughs> Homeworld three. Yeah. Homeworld three. So I know you're excited about this one. I I am. I was a big <laughs> Homeworld fan. I loved it. It was a fun game. If it's a, it was. Because I loved RTSs back then. This is when Homeworld came out. It was the very first like three-dimensional RTS where mm -hmm. you have a space age and you can zoom way out and you can have your big space battles and stuff yeah. like that, epic space battles. And they had armadas that little giant ships that were shaped like tacos, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they made a Homeworld 1 a Homeworld 2, but uh, Gearbox uh, crowdfunded a Homeworld 3 mm -hmm. and it uh, made it past its goals and so it is a thing now. Yep. Uh, it's going to be official. Uh, $482,000 from 2,672 backers. Uh, crowdfund crowdfunded on FIG, which I had never heard of before. I've never heard of it before either. Yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, they're up to $567,000. Oh, yeah. So that's higher than when I, yeah. when I first started. Uh, 3,262 yeah. backers. Yeah. And there's 24 days left. So they so got yeah. a lot of time to go. You still have some time to go if you guys are big Homeworld fans. Mm -hmm. I thought about backing up, but you know what? I got my backlog so gigantic. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> the the last couple of games I backlogged, I I did I did eventually get a beta key and then later on a Steam release key for one, uh, Sui Genesis or something like that. Uh -oh, it's it's right. a weird game. Uh, it's a it's a real time physics isometric kind of Diablo dungeon crawler. Oh, that sounds interesting. It it, it looked really interesting, and, and the demos that they were showing were were kind of cool with yeah. the physics demos um, where uh, um, basically it, it's isometric just like Diablo mm -hmm. where you're looking kind of quarter top down, down yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, you're using your mouse to swing your sword and to and to get your, your oh, yeah. player into a position and uh, and depending on your balance and everything else is how powerful your blows are going to be how accurately you're going to you're going to block That's the enemy interesting. It, it was an interesting concept and like I said it's kind of a dungeon crawler the game was freaking hard when it came out. Oh, well, that's that reminds me a lot of, uh, I don't know if you remember, Die by the Sword. Yeah. That old game where they had, uh, it was it was a first-person mm -hmm. dungeon crawler type of thing, 
but it was supposed to be a one-to-one motion with your sword and the mouse. Mm-hmm. And so if you swung your mouse around, you can you can do all kinds of fancy things. Yeah. But it just was so hard to control. It yeah. was very very wonky. Yeah. Um, and that kind of sounds very similar to what you're describing right there. Yeah. That yeah. really does. Yeah. Um, it was an interesting game. Beautiful graphics. Beautiful worlds. Uh, but uh, it just kind of it. I think it was released maybe just in early access, but I did have a copy of it. I tried playing it a couple times, and uh, uh, I could get out of the starting dungeon a couple of times, but oftentimes I ended up in a sword fight and just got my ass That's kicked. Yeah. Just, it wasn't even close. Yeah. So. yeah, one-to-one movements on a mouse for like a sword thing sounds cool, yeah. but it's not... It's not easy. And it's not quite one-to-one because your cursor is visible on the screen. Right. And so as your cursor goes by, it's it's locking the sword to the cursor. Oh, okay. I see. And, and so you maintain some semblance of yeah. where you're at. You're not you're not having your mouse all over the board. Right. Or um, it's kind of like uh, Spore's Navigation with a mouse where you kind of have a cursor that can oh, point okay. out yep. and whatnot. Yeah. Okay. Games like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, so it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't, yeah. wasn't great either. Yeah. So, needless to say, I've been bit on crowdfunding before. Yeah. So no, I spent a, a forty dollars. A lot of people so. have. There's a lot of cautionary tales out there. Yep. And of course, like, you know, there's still Star Citizen, which is kind of like, you shut your mouth. It's hey, coming hey, out. Hey, I, I know it's still coming out. I buy, I backed it too, but it's like you know, <laughs> it is how what many, it is. How many ships did you buy? One. I just bought one. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Come on. I wanted to get it when they had they had the sale for the one I think it was like twelve bucks or ten bucks or something where you get the one ship and then you're guaranteed to you know get updates and everything like that. I'm like, dude, ten bucks for the game again? Of course I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm like eighty five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you played it? I've played it quite a few times. In okay. fact, uh, I I did get into it uh, uh, when they had the VR module plugged into it as well, so okay. I was able to walk around and take a look at the ships that I yeah bought yeah yeah. Not. Um, yeah, I, I had bought three ships over the, the course of it. And I knew I was just backing Star Citizen and right. Chris Roberts and whatnot. And, and I'm fully fine with that. I'm fully fine with that decision. Um, yeah. Although I was thinking I would be playing it by now. Uh, uh, you and a lot of other people. Yeah. But, I mean, they, they're still updating it. They're still constantly like keeping everybody abreast of the changes. Still constant so. updates. Yeah. And, and hopefully in 2022 it'll be $85. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Um, I I know a couple of people who are far more into it than I am. Yeah, like hundreds. no, I, I do too. I do. I know yeah. quite a few people who are really really into it. Talk about it constantly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, and I'm not I'm not at that level, but I did I did buy into it because I find it fascinating and uh, yeah. I look forward to playing it when it's done. Come on. I think I'm out of RAM. You might be. Is what this is. Should I like just close some tabs here? Yeah, actually. Let's just close some tabs. This this may take a second. Yeah. Let's go close some of these beers. This tabs. laptop has been fantastic until it hit the latest Windows update, the, the 1903 update. And <laughs> the eat a lot of RAM update. And now it is just dog crap. Yeah, you could roll it back, I guess. Yeah, well, it's just going to update again. Yeah. So really what I just need to do is up, upgrade the RAM in it. It is uh, slotted memory. So. Oh, okay, so you can get some. Yeah. Well, let's. This was actually my first Ryzen purchase. Really? Was this laptop here? Uh, Ryzen Mobile. It's the uh, Ryzen 5 2500U. Uh, it does. Uh, it's a four core, eight thread chip with a Vega 8 graphics on board. So GT 1030 like uh, oh, yeah. speeds to it. And uh, it cost me, I think, $599. And it's and it's a dual <laughs> dual channel memory. Well, it's not helping me. It's not helping because it's it's yeah, let me see. Uh, you might need to copy the link and then uh, move it to another tab. Yeah, let's so. do that because that tab could be completely dead. Yes, in fact, there's a pretty high chance of it. Let's just do that. Kaboom! I know how to use browsers. That's right. Yay! Well. Your PC doesn't, though, because it's still spinning. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, we might have to do this one just by uh, explanation. This, this one, yeah, this could be by explanation. It's not much to yeah. really talk about this one. Uh, so, Bully 2 
It, Bully is another one of those Rockstar games that they're going, when are you coming out with a sequel? Right. And it's always rumored. Yeah. Well, someone leaked a couple of screenshots. I'm going to put that in some pretty heavy quotes, air quotes. Yeah. Um, of Bully 2. Uh, they had a map uh, with a UI that was very reminiscent of the original Bully. Uh, which uh, depicted a player standing in Windersmith Mansion. Um, and then they also had a screenshot from the game in 3D, which appeared to be our and our protagonist uh, standing outside of a nicer LA style Beverly Hills it, home. It totally looked like a Photoshop GTA 5 screenshot. It, it it kind of does, and it kind of doesn't. Um, uh, I I will say the character model is way too crisp, um, and the lighting is is wrong. Well, that's what I'm saying. You photo- right. You can Photoshop those lighting and stuff in. Uh, and there's there's right. also plenty of mods out there, shading mods and stuff like right. that, that can make it not look like GTA. Right. Th- this looks like kind of a cell shaded light version yes. of GTA Five. Um, anyway, uh, the oh, rumors the okay, the rumors come up. <laughs> the rumors wound in or wound up being not true, completely fabricated yep. by the person who posted them. He actually came out and said uh, this uh, Felipe Borges. Borges. There's, there's a picture right there. Uh, yeah, this is the picture. Um, so the the outline is just way too crisp. The shadows on the pants and everything don't line up, and that's very very anti Rockstar. They they've usually got their their stuff down. There's no shadow from the character there. Um, it it does look interesting, and it does look something like what what would be out of the Bully universe, right. but. And the UI looks convincing, although there's some icons that are reused from GTA. Um, so, uh, imaginative, but fake. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. No confirmation there's going to be a bully, too. I don't know if there's anybody chomping at the bit for that, though, is there? I mean, there's a lot of fans. There's, sure, there's a but... pretty devoted fan base that that is chomping at the bit for Bully 2. I'm certainly not. Yeah, I, mean, I think I played it, but I'm like, this wasn't... I played it. It wasn't like the pinnacle of like Rockstar games. Right, it, it was Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. The the, the game that I yeah. really didn't need a sequel to. And yeah. then when it and then when the sequel hit, it was, oh my god, Red Dead Redemption is better. amazing. And they could do the same thing with Bully 2, you know. But, but it was a game that I really just didn't fall in love with. Like, yeah. I played it, it was fine. Yeah. But what was the redeeming thing? We're like, oh, I want more. It didn't yeah. have that to yeah. me. Yeah. And like I said, neither did Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. So. But, well, they made another one. And neither good. did the original Just Cause. And Just Cause 2 was freaking amazing. Yes, that's true. So. And then Just Cause 3 was good. And Just Cause 4, 4 was, was 3. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, be careful what you wish for, folks. Yes, exactly. Be careful what you wish for. Uh, Multiplayer is coming to Cyberpunk 2077. That's right. So, uh, no one really saw this one coming? No. Everybody thought that this was going to be like a Witcher 3 single player, just a great RPG. But uh, CD Projekt Red announced today, um, officially, that they're going to do, once they release it, They'll have the single player, and they're going to have some DLC, which the DLC is, I guess this is going to be free. Yeah. Um, and then after that's done, they're going to be introducing multiplayer yes. to Cyberpunk 2077. Yep. Uh, and I think that coincides with an earlier announcement that we didn't put on here, where they say that all the cutscenes are going to be first-person perspective, mm-hmm. which means it's going to be a first-person perspective game, which is going to be more closer to a first-person shooter, which means... Maybe the multiplayer is going to be first-person fighting, first-person shooting type of I, stuff. I imagine multiplayer. Maybe it's co-op. Could be. I, I don't know. They didn't really spec. They didn't really say right what uh, what the plans were for multiplayer action was going to be. Yeah. They just said multiplayer action. That's it. And it could be, like you said, could be co-op, could be PvP, could be. Like GTA Five Online, where you have a, a living, breathing city, and you exist in that with other people, with a bunch of people who just want to run you over. Yeah. Yep. So, what do you think of this beer towards the end? I'm not getting that acid burn. It's it's still very much there. I taste that this is a hazy. Yeah. It's not affecting me. It's it's not bugging me. It's no. not it's not hindering from no. the experience one iota. 
Um, yeah. And like I said, a lot of hazies after the first four to six to eight ounces, I'm just done with. I don't want to drink anymore. This is not like that. I, not I, like I have noticed that the flavor has changed a little bit for me. It has changed. And that's yeah. how it is with most hazies for yeah. me anyway. I get about halfway there, the flavor starts changing. Mm -hmm. The acid buildup kind of gets there, and it tastes like a completely different beer. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, it just tastes like a disgusting beer towards the end. Mm -hmm. This one's not that bad towards the end. It's okay. It's not as good as it started. No, not no, as good as it started, say. but it's not like there's some that are just like, oh my god, I can't even finish this. Right. This is just, it's just a pint. Pint? Really? You want me to drink a yeah, pint? Yeah, it like eats away at my taste buds, and yeah. I can't like take it. But this one's pretty good. And yes, I started talking more, and now you're way ahead of me. Oh, see, so I got the, so I got the home world uh, nice. taco shaped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's who, awesome. Who said that? Uh, Skull. Oh, Skull did that. Yeah. Okay, then Skull's probably... Yeah, he probably, like, uh, chimed in. He put some money into the old... Uh... That's funny. Uh, do I have a screenshot one? Hold on. Let me... Are you going to go... Uh... I might try it. I don't remember which... If I have a screenshot. Hey, I do. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, do. Look at that. There you go. Skull, you're on the big screen. There you go. So Skull went ahead and posted the uh, the taco ship. Yeah. So Skull, you're famous. Yeah, there you go. Hope they do a Red Dead Redemption on PC for the next year. Of course I do. Uh, everybody wants to see. Everyone wants Red Dead Redemption on PC. PC. Everybody just wants to be able to see what the PC can do with it. Not, not only do we want Red Dead Redemption 2, I want the original Red Dead Redemption redone for PC. Well, that, we were talking about that on the Discord a couple. The buildings exist. No, no. I mean, the 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 mm -hmm. um, emulators are getting really, really close. Really to, close. Really close to like really, really close. doing really well. Uh, the uh, RPSC three. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever the heck that one's called. Yeah, uh, the, the PlayStation the, the three, three emulator. emulator. Yeah. Uh, it's getting dangerously close yes. to being able to play yeah. Red Dead Redemption at sixty FPS. At sixty. Sixty FPS. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, there's a couple slowdowns, a couple texture issues to resolve, there's a couple game crashing issues to resolve. Yeah. But they are really close to having a playable title out of that. Yeah. So yeah, in fact I was gonna go download it and try it just to see. I I thought it. about it. Yeah. Uh, in fact not only are they getting dangerously close to sixty uh, there's already a group that's doing a texture mod to bring it up yes. to 4K. Yeah, to like get a really well. Or was it was it Red Dead Redemption? No, no. Who I was thought that was Red Dead Redemption. Was it Red Dead Redemption? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but lots of fun stuff coming. Yeah, no audio. Is my audio broken on that one? I didn't think it was. Oh well. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, no audio. <laughs> Whatever. Well, we didn't say anything during that anyway. Yeah, it was just a it was just a picture. Hey, look, it's Skull with the Taco PC. You're yeah. famous, or yeah. the the Taco Ship. You're famous, Skull. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, on to some Switch gaming news. Right. As uh, oh, don't, now now I gotta finish this. I, I beat you. Uh, I straight up mugged you. I don't know if I can chug this. <laughs> this is not like a chuggable beer. No, it's not. So this is the Two Towns Cider House uh, out of uh, Corvallis, Oregon. The Bat Apple Imperial Apple Cider uh, with uh, Meadow Foam Honey. 10.5%. Uh, so this is, a, this is a heavy ooh, one. Wow. This is a good one to end the evening or start to end the evening. Yeah. This will end your evening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the amount of sugar that's in this one. This one will end your evening. That looks nice and clear. Yeah. This is definitely not a hazy. No. I know uh, as a home brewing last year for uh, an experiment, John uh, tried to make a hazy cider. Yeah. It was, it was okay. I mean, it was interesting. It wasn't like the best thing ever, but it was interesting. It's a good experiment. Nice and crisp. It does smell crisp. Very crisp. Oh, that's good. Oh, With yeah. Some vanilla in there. Kind of. Yeah. Little, like little cinnamon. Apple, little, cinnamon, uh, vanilla. It's not quite the pie level, but. Right. It's right there. It's sweet. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a little bit more dry, but. Yeah, it's not apple pie sweet. 
It's, no. it's not, a, you know, apple crumble or anything like that. Yeah. But, well, uh, apple honey, so yeah. Oregon white oak. Hmm. No, that's very good. Actually, I do I like taste it. a little oakiness to it. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. That you said it and I went, oh, ding. <laughs> <laughs> it showed yeah. up. All right, on to some Nintendo Switch news, uh, yes. which there was a lot of it yesterday. Uh, Overwatch coming to the Switch. Yes. Uh, uh, Divine uh, Original Sin 2 yep. coming to the Switch. Uh, Doom 64 yeah. coming to the Switch. Uh, coming to the Switch. Um, we'll, we'll start with, uh, the, the larger announcement, and that's that, uh, Nintendo SNES Classics are coming to the Switch, 20 of them, tomorrow. Yes. But then, of course, you know, most everybody's got their emulator. An SNES, SNES Classic. Classic. Yeah. Or... So let's go buy these games for the fifth time. Right. <laughs> well, these are actually released for Nintendo Switch Online customers, and they're free. Ooh. So if you subscribe to the service, then you get them they're hundred percent free. free. Okay, so you get them. Um, so honestly, not a bad selection of games. They're okay. Mario Kart's a very good one. A um, couple questionables in there. Uh, how many people are actually going to play Stunt Race FX? Yeah, like Star Fox, I can see from a nostalgia factor, but it's not right. a good game. Yeah, and I'm going to be lambasted in the comments for that. But Star, Star Fox, Fox, the original I... Star Fox. I didn't, yeah, because with the with the FX chip, right? I never liked Star Fox. I don't know why. It's not a like great that. game. Yeah, it, it, it's it's barely playable. Yeah, it was it was it was supposed to uh, show off the FX chip, right? That was on the cartridge, which to which was it, which was a PlayStation demo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So th this was pre SNES, CD, Sony. Sony Nintendo PlayStation yeah. uh, era, this was supposed to show off what that tech would have been like yeah. had it reached PS1 levels. Right. Um, and uh, so, while well, Star Fox, I can see kind of the nostalgia factor. It's not Race FX. Uh-uh. Yeah. No, I, I don't know why you included that. Super Metroid's good. Like, a lot of those on here are super good. Puyo Puyo um, 2, uh, Link to the Past. You've got yes. your, your Mario Kart, Mario World, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, which I'm very happy to see. Yeah, Yoshi's Island. I think that is a very underrated game. Yeah. Um, uh, F-Zero. Original F-Zero is on I it. know. That's that's an interesting one, too. Uh, Breath of Fire, Demon's Crest. Both a couple of good, very good RPGs. Yeah. Demon's Crest is a lot of... It's, it's underrated. I think yeah. it was one of the funner games that came out in the SNES, not, and not too many people like uh, picked up on it. Yeah, not the RPGs I think everyone wanted to see with the Final Fantasy 2 and 3 and the Chrono Trigger. Right. I think most people would have far preferred to see those, but... Well, those are Square Enix properties, right. so maybe so, they can't. So, good luck. Know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, not a bad list of games to start. That and Joe and Mac 2. Uh, I, I played the original Joe and I, Mac. I don't think I played the Joe and Mac 2. <laughs> I never did. I, I, I don't think I played the second one. I know I had the first one. I owned the first one. Yeah. So. <laughs> F-Zero. So hot this season. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what beer was better? John wants to know. Better than... Uh, came out what you would expect a, a hazy cider to taste like. Uh, are you saying your home your homebrew hazy cider versus this? This. Oh, this is definitely better. Um, are you saying uh, Steve's homebrew versus your homebrew? Steve's. Yeah, thank you. Uh, his, his pineapple uh, IPA milkshake, I think, is pretty darn good. Yeah. Your ESB, I get what you were trying to go for, but you weren't quite there. Like, I could drink it, but it wasn't great. Yeah. So, sorry to put you down like that. If you were on camera, the the answer would be reverse. Steve's pineapple is freaking terrible, and your ESP is the best thing I've no, ever. No, no, no one's gonna believe that. Right? That's just you're just being ridiculous. I am. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Do a bar yeah, that's that's the best thing that came out of Starbucks. Peppy. Do a barrel roll. You're becoming more like your father. <laughs> was there? Oh no, there's just pictures. Okay, I thought there was a more on the list. That and. Uh, uh, Falco. I guess I should be thankful. <laughs> Thanks, Falco. Next time I'm going to let you die. You and Slippy, because screw Skippy. Oh, that's good. 
That is and good. Then, and then, of course, here's the here's the the big news. The big news. The big news about the Switch. I don't think anyone saw this one coming. I don't think so either. This is this. This was really weird. <laughs> this was the 2001 benchmark title to have. Yeah. Uh, this was kind of what took. And still a fun game today. St- I still play still this game occasionally. Today, yeah. I'll fire it up every yeah. once in a while oh, yeah. and, and, and run through it. Yeah. Uh, so this was kind of the game that honestly put LucasArts and Star Wars games on the map as far as not the flight games. Right. That This wasn't TIE Fighter or X-Wing or X-Wing versus TIE yeah. Fighter or X-Wing Alliance or anything like that. This was the game that took kind of the first person shooter like oh you're just a wolfenstein knockoff a la, yeah it uh, took dark forces it. oh you're doomed with with stormtroopers right. it took it from that to being legitimately i feel like a freaking jedi yes we're talking of course about uh jedi, jedi knight 2, 2 yeah. jedi outcast now i played the original dark forces 2 jedi knight yes um, was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Um, this, this one took the combat to the next level. Yes. You had uh, all the different force powers, and they had the multiplayer in it. And you can battle with people. multiplayer it, was it felt amazing. Great yeah. to play. Uh, Dark Forces Two Jedi Knight was a great shooter. It was one of the first 3D animated non sprite shooters, mm-hmm. uh, and certainly one of the first with multiplayer. Um, as far as that goes. And, uh, you know, you think of, like, the Quake 2 right. things that were kind of happening during that day. Jedi Knight held its own yeah, it uh, did. in that realm. Oh, yeah. Um, especially once you got into the modding community and you went to Masassi.net and you started downloading the total conversions with, like, the modern weapons, AK-47, yeah. and, yep. and things oh, like yeah. that. That we, was totally my jam. Yeah, we played a ton of this at, at LAN parties and yeah. stuff like that. Jedi Knight 2, I think, was a solid game that we played for at least four or five months in a row just right because it was it was there yeah Je- jedi knight 2 kind of took that original formula to the next level where it was a good first person shooter they made this a good jedi game yeah um where it still had all the first person shooter elements you wanted you could play first person you could you you had yeah. free aiming with the mouse yeah. you which don't take that f- for granted well in we'll 2001 see. yeah we'll see now because now it's coming to the switch and right. the ps4 Right, but it but in two thousand one, mouse look was not a given yet. A lot of people were converting to it. Then. Right, they were, they were they were warming up to it because right. I remember I remember playing like Duke Nukem and Doom and all this it was strictly keyboard. Yes, no mouse look because they, they didn't have it. They didn't right. need it because Doom and Duke Nukem didn't have that vertical plane. Uh, Duke <laughs> Duke Nukem had a vertical plane, but it was kind of hacked it. into it. Was it was hacked into it. Right. Yeah, because if you play Doom and Doom two. You had an enemy up there. You would just shoot in that direction, and it would hit them. Right. Like there was no. You didn't have to aim up. Yeah. The, the, the gun would automatically start shooting yes. higher yeah. because it was on the same plane as an right. enemy. Exactly. Uh, with uh, and Duke Nukem kind of did that as well. Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, but there was a look up, look down yeah. aspect to it, although it was terrible. Yeah. Um. Uh. Jedi Knight, the original one, was one of the first as as well as quake and a couple of the other very yeah. early that had 3D true, 3D, true 3d that look had, up right yeah. right but again in 2001 don't take for granted mouse look because there were some shooters still in the market that didn't. didn't do that yeah well because making those doom clones was so profitable at that point. right i mean so a lot of people didn't have that yeah you had the original quake you had unreal and those are the ones that really started out with the mouse mm-hmm. look and everything mm-hmm. like that but anyway, uh, Jedi Knight 2, coming to the Switch. Uh, and I could not be more happy for this one. That would be fun, honestly. Uh, this is probably an instant buy for me. Um, it's a phenomenal game. I loved playing it. What I really want to see is, are they going to also embrace the modding community that is still active for this game? It is, but I, I don't think, I that think it's, it's going to come because... Are they going to allow so, custom levels? So, Sony is not very hot on mods. Mm, right. Uh, Switch isn't either. Or I mean, yeah, Nintendo. Nintendo. Either. So they're yeah. both not like, don't don't screw with our stuff. So I highly doubt it. Yeah. If you want, you know, the best Gen 9 experience, Gen 9 2 experience, you're still going to have it on the PC. But being able to have that Switch and being able to take it portably and, and totally, that's 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 great. I think that's awesome. Yep. Absolutely. Why it came to the PS4, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's coming to, me, to Switch and PS4. That's, that seems a little... Yeah. Whatever. But, yeah. you know... Switch makes sense though, totally because the the portability of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting to see a game that was originally released for GameCube coming to the PS4 as a new release. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of 
odd. Yeah. So. Well, I don't think because back then, uh, I don't remember where Jedi Knight Two came out because I know it came for PC. I think it came out for um, a few platforms, but I don't think it came out for Sony, did it? I don't know <sighs> where it came out from originally. Look at the uh, wiki or something wiki. like that. Yep. Uh, Wikipedia, originally for uh, Microsoft Windows, OS X, GameCube, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PS4. So, so yeah, yeah. PS4. So original yeah, so Xbox. So, so, yeah, it never came out originally for the PS2. The, the, the PS, yeah. PS2 would have been. Yeah, I did not have it. So, Sony never had it. Now it's coming out for the PS4. It's kind of, yep. kind of weird, but okay. Yep. Uh, I remember a couple of friends had it on GameCube. Yeah. Um, I, I had it on PC because that was awesome. Yes, of course. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so finally coming to the PlayStation. Finally swinging Sony's way. Uh, anyway, that's about all we have for news for the night. Uh, yeah, I know. It's very slow news day. We tried to stretch it as far as possible. Uh, yep. and I allowed myself to be distracted by lens talk. And, and I, I didn't allow myself to be distracted by car talk, although you guys tried to get me. You tried to bait me into it. Um... What do you guys want to talk about? We got another 15 we got like minutes 15 here. Minutes. We can we can blow some time off. Yeah. The floor is open. We got uh, a little bit of cider here, 10%. Got about 8 ounces of 10.5% cider left. As this goes down, if the questions get more lewd, I may or may not answer it. I don't know. We'll see. This is where the nudity comes into play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Let me switch over to the Twitch stream <laughs> so I don't lose my YouTube channel. Hold on. Yeah kidding uh join jeff's discord absolutely you should join jeff's discord not a question but okay yes yeah i like it it's a, it's a great statement uh uh as little as one dollar a month or you could though you could certainly donate more and i would be overly appreciative to that you can sit there and talk to me and jeff and john sometimes Rhett when he wants to show up yeah but yeah we're all there we're all there uh, pretty much 24 hours a day yeah we we don't sleep much i was up until 3 30 this morning and i'm sure oh, you woke up at four I, I no actually I slept really good last night. Oh okay. I crashed like about eleven thirty. Okay. I was tired. Well, John's up at six. Yeah, he's so, up pretty early. So there you go. Uh, I'm I'm usually up between six and six thirty. Can you do a video on the PS3 emulator? I've thought about getting into some emulator videos. I'm gonna probably decline though. Uh, there is so much good content out there on emulators and yeah. performance and things like that. Um, it's well, it's. It's something I'm deeply interested in, and I have a lot of emulators myself, yeah. and I, I followed the community very rapidly for a long time. I don't think it's anything that I could bring anything new to the market with, so no, I probably will not be doing videos on it. There's plenty of them out there. Uh, in fact, I think the the developers that are doing the PS3 emulator, the RSPC, whatever. RSPC3. Yeah, the RSPC3. I think every month they put one out that shows the updates and the progress they have. Mm -hmm. So if you have subscribed to their channel, you'll get consistent updates of what's new what mm -hmm. progress that they made they've made and everything like that if you want a video on how to do it mm -hmm. uh i don't think it takes much i mean honestly i don't want to like i'm sure you don't want to make a video on how to download roms and no. stuff like that no so no and and even even the times that i've delved into emulation i've done that a couple of times i've played it very very you're all like homebrew stuff. It's it, it's homebrew or or legit stuff that you can buy or yeah. that you can get from the original developer, like Blackthorn or right. Uh, there was the racing game from from uh, Blizzard. There was a couple other games you yeah. can get from them. Uh, it's been about the legitimate ROMs that you can get. It's tongue in cheek. I know darn well you can go out and download your own ROMs and put them in there. Yeah. But if I'm going to demo it, I'm going to demo it with a, a legit ROM. Right. Yeah. Uh, what do I think of the new Ram 2500 and 3500? A buddy of mine actually just bought the new uh, 3500 Laramie HD and he freaking loves it. And, and I'm right there with him. Uh, I think it is a fantastic truck. Um, he actually drove it all the way down to the Grand Canyon and back. Really? Uh, so did something like 1900 miles round trip in it. Already, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, just dove right <laughs> just into like it head first. Um, and... Uh, I think it's a fantastic truck. Uh, just, I mean, uh, I think I think they finally brought the Allison transmission in and, and finally paired it with the Dodge engine. My biggest knock on Dodge has always been the transmissions where I always feel like I'm lacking something. I always feel like 
it's, it's just kind it, of chunky. It's not the right ratios. Yeah. It's not. It's kind Feels of chunky. chunky. Yeah. Um, the the new Allisons that are in there. Oh, they're fantastic. And and this is a truck that I could finally drive. So yeah, uh, until you deal with a turn knob shifter. Uh, oh yeah, the shifter's on the stock. Yeah, it's a little weird. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the, yeah, he, he has the new 3500. I know he loves it, and I, he might be watching. I don't know. How's it going, man? Um, but uh, yeah, 12-inch screen on the interior, the full 360 camera. So when you're backing up, it's like cheating. Uh, if you want to back up to a trailer or backing into a parking spot or parallel parking, your, your big-ass 3500, it really is like cheating. Yeah. It's like selecting your top-down camera for GTA 5. It's just <laughs> cheating sometimes. Um, can you pick a single spot at the supermarket? You can swing it in there. And you can turn that camera on at any time. You can you can swing in front ways yeah. and turn it on, and, yeah. and you'll never touch anything. It, it's it's flipping awesome. So, yeah, I, I fully, fully endorse the 3500 at the very least. 2500 probably, too, because I know it's a lot of the same tech that's in that one. Uh, ETA Prime is a, is a great channel to check out. Absolutely. I, I do watch a lot of his stuff. I've watched a lot of his Latte Panda stuff that he's done lately. Uh, and he does do some emulation stuff from time to time. He's a great resource for that. Um, only good Dodge because it has a Cummins and an Allison because they weren't made by Chrysler. And I would fully... Agree. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've never really had a problem with Dodge engines. I've always had a problem with the transmissions they choose. Like I said, they, they always feel clunky. They always feel like I'm in the wrong power band. They always feel like they're shifting hard or they're not shifting at the right points. Or I feel like the engine has so much more to give and the transmission just won't give it to you. Yeah. And, and I felt like that for probably 20 years about Dodge trucks. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, now that Allison's on board and uh, with the Cummins, uh, was the 6.7 Cummins that's in that thing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with that. Uh, you got iDRAC on your Dell server, right? No, this is a rack mount workstation. This is the Dell R7610 cross-modeled with the Dell T7610, uh, which is a tower workstation. So no, this does not have ILO, iDRAC, uh, any kind of pre-boot thing that I can get into and get any diagnostic information off of. Um, I am fairly confident the motherboard is dead, and I think it's a PCI Express problem. Uh -huh. um, where I can get, uh, basically what's happening on it is the CPU posts fine, the RAM posts fine, and I know that because I can remove those components, right. and, and, I'll get, still... and I'll get errors for those, those components. Right. Uh, the numbers on the front, if it's a solid three, it's a CPU error, if it's a solid four, it's a memory error. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a one, two, three with a blue light, and on the R7610, that means any other error. Okay, so it's probably some kind of motherboard failure. It, it's it's a motherboard failure. After it posts the memory and the CPU, it can't move on to the next devices. I'm not even getting USB to light up. I can't get my okay, keyboard so lights nothing. to come on. Yeah. Uh, so something about something in the PCI Express or the ICH or something mm -hmm. about this board is not allowing it to jump to the next step, and it's just it's just dead. I I don't know why, because I didn't do anything to it. So is it? Under warranty, you just take it back. Or nope. nope, you gotta nope. go. You gotta get a new one, huh? Two hundred bucks. I got a. I got a new swallow. new one on the way. Nice. So, yeah, that was that was not a fun pill to swallow this morning. What do you think of the Ryzen seventeen hundred for a hundred dollars? Worth it? Hundred dollars? Hell Heck yeah! Yeah, for a hundred bucks, that's worth it. Hell yeah! All day and twice on Tuesdays. The Ryzen 7 seventeen hundred is a great processor. Um, yes, the thirty six hundred is going to be faster in gamers course, by course. probably 20 to 25 percent but price point difference and and again it depends on what resolution you're gaming at that's at 1080p if you're gaming at 1440 it's probably closer to 10 to 8 yeah. percent if you're gaming at 4k it's negligible mm -hmm. you could game you could almost game on like an fx 6100 in 4k and your gpu is still your bottleneck uh so yeah i Seventeen hundred for a hundred bucks, no brainer. Yeah, do it. No brainer. Uh, Thirty-two hundred G still a good pick for casual gaming in an HTCP. Absolutely, the Vega Eight is absolutely solid, and there's really no huge reason to jump up to the Vega Eleven. Um, you do get hyper threading or or uh, MT. Uh, gosh, what does AMD call it? Multi threading, whatever. SMT. Excuse me. 
Uh, simultaneous multi-threading uh, with uh, the 3400G, and you also get Vega 11 graphics. But honestly, the difference between the Vega 8 and Vega 11 is about 10% or about 3 frames per second. So, What do you do with the brick components? We make dream catchers out of them. Yeah. We turn them into dream catchers. Uh, uh, no, actually, uh, we have a recycling <laughs> yard not that far from us that uh, that we give it up to them, and they, they mine it for precious metals. So... Happy to give all my dead stuff up to them, which I've given them a fair amount over the years. So, uh, How to convert your dead electronics to meth. That would be a good video. Oh, no, wait. Uh, that's not what they said. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, leave it on your curb. It'll find yeah, a way. It'll find a way, yeah. Life, uh... <laughs> uh it, it finds a way. Well, there it is. Yep, uh... Nothing on Talking Heads. So Radeon or NVIDIA? Depends on what your budget is. Um, I went NVIDIA. I always go, typically tend to go NVIDIA. Yep. Um, Not that I have anything against Radeon. They're, they're yeah. cards, but... Right now, it's a weird market. It's a very weird market. Because the only sub-$200 cards that are on the market are last-gen cards. Yes. We don't have a true injury-level card yet. No, we, we don't have one. Except for the 1650, which is 150 bucks, which is outclassed in every way, shape, and form by the RX 570 and RX 580 and RX 590, yeah. which are about that 180 to 220. And yeah. most of the 1650s are priced in the $180 price range. So I don't really count that. We don't have a $100 graphics card on sale today. And that's freaking weird. Like, remember the last generation, we had the, the GTX 1050 that was at least 115 bucks that was actually priced closer to 100 bucks, mm -hmm. And we had the GT 1030, which was $85, which was close closer to 65 mm -hmm. at launch. And then the mining craze hit, and all of a sudden we were spending $130 for GT 1030. Yeah, yeah. Piss off. Yeah. Um, so we don't have anything really new in the sub $230 price point. At two hundred thirty dollars, you have the sixteen sixty, which is comparable and slightly better than the RX five ninety. Yeah. But not, it's not it's not a huge leap forward. Not a big, it's not, not a this big difference. It's not this massive difference no, like you get generationally. Different. Same with the sixteen sixty Ti. It's like okay, I I have a GTX ten seventy, which I can pick up for one hundred and ninety dollars used. Mm -hmm. um, and I usually won't compare used versus new components, but if a component's been on the year on, on the market for three or four years mm -hmm. and you can pick it up, it's a valid option. And yeah. a 1070 Founders Edition or a, a, a EVGA Superclocked, yeah. heck yeah, pick one of those up. Um, so really the graphics card market starts at about $330 today with the, the RTX 2060 and the RX uh, 5700. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, the 5700 kicks his butt and takes his lunch money up until the about, about the $600 price point when you get into the 2070 Super. Uh, when you get into the 2070 Super custom cards. Custom cards, yeah. Uh, which are still which selling for... Which selling out. They're, and then you can't... They're hard to find right now. Right. They're with, very hard to find. And, and even the 2070 is still selling for like 550 bucks. Yes. 57 NXT is a faster card in every way, shape, and form except for video encoding with NVENC. Mm -hmm. So if you're a streamer... Maybe go Nvidia if you're any if you're just a gamer and want to play at home. Fifty seven hundred XT or even it's the fifty seven hundred yeah, totally is totally fine. But most gamers aren't going out and spending four or five hundred dollars on graphics cards. So it's just this weird market that we're in right well, now. Well, yeah, because we're we're at we're at the beginning of a new generation of video right. cards. So all the all the big high end are yep. taking our gummit. Uh, what liquor are you going to have after the show? We're not gonna have. We're gonna start. We're gonna start huffing um, uh, uh, canned air. I have some gorilla glue. Up. Yeah, we're gonna start doing that. Yeah, we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna start huffing stuff. And yeah, stuff, like drinking things. So. Any suggestions? Leave them down in the uh, in the go. chat below. Uh, Skull's asking, "What games are you playing these days?" Me personally, um, I okay. I actually went back. Some. I'm, I'm trying to go through my backlog. Okay. So I started Arkham Knight. Which I put off for the last. I haven't time. played that either. I well, I played all the other Batman games and I liked yeah. them. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going back and start. I started that one, and then there was a uh, another one that I started playing called Machinka, which is a railroad old steam railroad simulator type of a thing where you build okay. your railroad empire yeah. type of a thing. It's it's very early early access type of a game. Yeah. 
uh, I'm mainly playing it because my son loves watching trains. <laughs> and so he'll sit there and watch me play it yeah. without complaining. Yeah. And so I'll sit there and play play that game. Uh, most recently, I went through Super Mario Odyssey. Super, oh, Super, Super Mario, Mario Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, and it was mainly because both my daughters love watching me play that. And yeah. uh, uh, and so last uh, couple of weeks ago, I was I was digging on that. Um, I think I'm up to 520 stars or moon stars, oh, really? yeah. whatever. Okay. Uh, so pretty pretty far into that, beat beat the game, beat Bowser, uh, beat the rabbits on the dark side of the moon, um, and I'm kind of working my way towards the darker side of the moon, trying to beat beat that one. That's what I I was digging on lately, uh, either that or Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> yeah, so you're saying Diddy Kong Racing, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. I went through uh, uh, my friend Pedro lately. Yes, that was that yes, was a fun game. That was fun. I still have to pick that one up, even though I like pimp the heck out of it. I yes. still haven't bought it yet. <laughs> you, you should totally buy it. it, it it's worth the 15 yeah, bucks. Okay. It's worth it. I, I will probably pick it. I just know it's probably one of those games that's going to eventually show up and because I subscribe to the Humble Monthly. Humble, Bundle. yeah. I just know it's going to like, as soon as I buy it, it's going to show up next month. It'll be like a two ninety nine. Yeah, it's going to, it's like, yeah. it's going to show up. So like, oh, yeah. like and, and like I said, my backlog is huge. So like, and it, and it is, it's one of those casual games you can probably pick up and just play it. Yes, and and it's it's only about a six or seven hour game. It's not terribly long, no. Uh, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. And and trying to go through and actually get your high scores and get excellent ratings right. in the levels and and figuring out the combos that you need mm-hmm. to do in certain points. Um, it is really uh, it's kind of a a shooter game when you first go through it, kind of like yeah. Contra, yeah. where you're just trying to make it through alive. Right. And then the second time you play through it, you're trying to go for those combo scores, and so it becomes Once more. Once you get the mechanics down, it's it becomes much more of a strategy game right. and planning and 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 whatnot. So yeah, it, it definitely has my vote for a great game. To play. I, I actually started playing a little more of those uh, Jackbox games when I had people come yep. over. Yep. Uh, you know, I had friends come over and then. We'll God, play I played Jackbox those. twenty years ago. Well, the, not the not the not the trivia ones, but we're yeah. doing like the drawful. And oh, okay, the, like those okay. Type of ones. Okay. Those are pretty fun. Yeah, we were doing a bit of that. But that's that's just because they had people over, and I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. want to be downstairs in my basement playing a game by myself. Jeff and Steve, any favorite point-and-click adventure games, past or present? Oh my god! Wow, so many. What a good um, question. For you, prop. Can, I'm gonna guess yours, and you guess mine. Okay. Uh, go ahead. You'll, it'd be it'd be pretty easy. For Monkey you Island. Say. Yes. Well, which one though? Uh, ooh, that's a secret. Secret of Monkey Island. That's the first one. Yeah. No. No? No. No. Okay. Curse of Monkey Island. Oh, Curse that of Monkey Island. Curse of Monkey Island was my favorite. Okay. That was the, that was when they started doing okay. the, this, the animation. So that's mine. Do me. Um, I don't think... I don't... It's in I, the LucasArts family. Oh, it is in the LucasArts family. Well, ooh. Is it really? I, I have one that is not, and you will probably never guess it, but it's probably like second or third on my list. Okay. But, but my number one is definitely in the LucasArts family. Uh, I full throttle. Yes, <laughs> nailed it. Oh, got it. <laughs> nailed it. Uh, yeah, full throttle number one. Um, Grim Fandango is another really good one. Yes, it, it Grim Fandango is up there. I, I like it. I think Grim Fandango is my number two. Yeah, I'm gonna think it's my number two. Boy, it's close. It, yeah. it, you're splitting hairs with me there. Number two, I would actually probably go Sam and Max hit the road. <sighs> yeah, that was a good one. Just for the humor. Yeah, the the humor good. is top notch in that yeah. game. Uh, number three, I'm gonna give to Sierra. Are you gonna get like uh, King's Quest? No, right? no, no. Or, or Space Quest? No, no, no. This one's out of left field. Cop Quest? No. <laughs> I said left field. Oh, okay. Uh, Torrens Passage. I don't. I don't know that one. Right. I don't know that one. It is an odd game, but it is so good. Uh, basically, it's a kid whose parents have. Uh, have been uh, taken away from him. He, he wakes up an orphan, and and he's trying to find them. And he digs through like this mystical world, kind of like King's Quest, where you're going through like the multiple layers right. of, yeah. of worlds and whatnot. Um, and it's a puzzle solving game, yeah. um, as most of them were. But the the storytelling, the voice acting are just to me like top notch, mm-hmm. top notch 1996, but top notch. Right. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I, my my kind of like. One of my favorites that are kind of like off the cuff. Uh, that's LucasArts was the dig. I like the dig. Mm-hmm. Not too many people like that one. 
I thought the dig was really good. Dig was really good. Like you said, Grim Fandango is right up there it's with up my there, top yeah. four. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, th those are my top three. Kind of bummed they never made a, a sequel to Grim Fandango. Because yeah. I thought that was excellent. Yeah. But they kind of tied up the story at the end. He watched it, so. But I thought the world was really, really fun and interesting and great. Do I need a Tesla P40? You're selling yours? Uh, no, I've spent enough money on this project already. Yeah, definitely. Good Lord. This was supposed to be an easy thing. This was supposed to be a, hey, I found some video cards for 40 bucks a piece. Oh, let's buy three of them and do something fun. I'm at like $1,400, not including sponsorships for storage. Yeah. I've got $1,000 in storage going into this damn thing. So, yeah. Well, no, it wasn't some of the storage that, it, that was, that was uh, sponsored by Seagate, right? It was Seagate, but it's $1,000 in storage. Worth the storage. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can give me some storage, too, if you feel guilty. Right. I'll take some. I, I, I have a pair of... Uh, I got these in this last week. Uh, Seagate graciously offered to sponsor the, the storage for the server um, to, to get me enough read writes and make sure it was accurate because a lot of times if you go with consumer drives with yeah. a lot of high-activity things, yeah. they'll just crash because they are not as good or as reliable as enterprise-grade drives. Yeah. They gave me two Iron Wolf 1.92 terabyte drives to run in a RAID 1 for my OS... And then a one terabyte uh, uh, Fire CUDA uh, NVMe drive right, yeah. to run in my only available PCI Express slot. It, it happens to be a 4X slot, so I bought a riser for right. it. Yeah. Um, but I got a one terabyte drive to run either as a cache drive, if Zen will support it, either that or that's going to be my game install library. So well, all does, the games... All, does, does Zen support the NVMe? I don't... I know it supports NVMe. I don't know if it supports cache Caching drive. For, okay, I got um, you. Because what I want to do is run a RAID 1 with a yeah. cache disk. And so it'll basically be two terabytes of raw storage. Right. And then whatever is heavily utilized will be will be cached, cached in the NVMe. The, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so the Indiana Jones ones were good too. There um, was only two Indiana Jones ones. There were two Indiana there Jones the Temple ones. Temple of Doom, and then there yeah. was the Fate of Atlantis. Fate of Atlantis. Fate of Atlantis was better than Temple, Temple of Doom, in my opinion. Well, because Temple of Doom was not voiced. Fate right. of Atlantis was. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there's also the the LucasArts games, the, the stories games, the Yoda stories and the... Uh, oh, it was, wasn't there like a the Yoda desktop? Yeah. The Yoda desktop stories? Yeah. <laughs> I had that. <laughs> I bought that, that so brand bad. new that at Egbert bad. Computing. Yeah, I had the that box was bad. For it. That was not very good. I played it. Okay. I played it. You saying you played it is not an endorsement. It doesn't say it was good. <laughs> it's saying it was the only uh, damn I Star Wars it. game at the time. Yeah, I know it was. It, it didn't have too much at the time, but yes. Yeah. Uh, didn't know Torrance Passion was uh, was directed by the Leisure Suit Larry Gang. Really? Little known fact. I did not know that. Yep. I had completely forgotten about that, so thank yeah. you very much. Good morning, Norway. Uh, I recently got my CompTIA uh, A-plus certification. Where do you recommend I go forward? It all depends on what you want to do. Um, honestly, IT work is very certification driven. It, it's very much what do you know and how recently did you learn it? Yeah. It changes all the time. Um, it changes all the time. And so just because you got your A-plus in 2001 doesn't mean you're worth jack crap to me today. Yeah. Um, so congratulations on getting the CompTIA. That is a fantastic certification to have. If you're networking based, if you want to go Cisco, start looking at your uh, uh, CCNA, CCNP. Um, if you uh, are not Cisco, look at some of the HP and Aruba schools, look at some, uh, some different certs through them. Um, and actually real world, I would recommend more looking at the HP side of things because they teach the real network concepts, not the Cisco network concepts which is completely different terminology. No. Um, Everyone likes to use their own terminology. And that's right. Nice. Um, if you want to go hardware, um, I, I don't know where to go with hardware. If you want to go programming, I don't know where to go with programming. But, there's uh, so many places to go for programming. Yeah. That's ridiculous. The, there, there's a thousand different answers to that question. Yeah. And, it, and it really matters what you want to do because IT is so, so far reaching. Uh, if I'm caching, the SSD will die fast. Uh, it's a it's an enterprise grade NVMe drive so rated it for, last for a long time. rated for literally petabytes worth of writes yeah. on a one terabyte drive. Yeah. So it should be rated for for a lot. It's fine, especially for you know, what we're trying to do here. Uh, Derek works for HP Enterprise, and he won he agrees one hundred percent. No one's ever been fired for buying Cisco. However, Cisco has their one hundred percent own terminology that they use for networking. Yeah. Uh, and they are not standards based. 
Um, and so there, there's Cisco, there's Juniper, there's uh, uh, Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. there, there's a number of different networking companies out there. All of them kind of use their own flavor. If you want to learn networking, go to an HPE or Aruba class, uh, quite honestly. If you want to learn what they what the concepts actually mean, uh, because I think that's the the core. You, you learn more of the core fundamentals at an HPE and Aruba class than you would at a Cisco class because Cisco uses their own terms. Yeah. So. Uh, Meraki is hot bleep, and I didn't mean that in a good way. I don't think anyone means that in a good way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the number of times I've turned down Meraki from coming into my environment, I, I can't even count it anymore. Uh, Rista Juniper Citrix, so many. Yeah, there there's... Again, there, there's thousands of possible answers to that question. And so it all depends on what you want to go with. Uh, myself, I'm more, anymore, I'm more DevOps and management oriented. Um, but I've, I've done a fair bit of networking in my time. Um, so, yeah. Take that advice with uh, all of the grains of salt. Lots of salt. <laughs> right. Lots of salt. I uh, probably got time for two more. Any more questions? I'm done with my beer, so yeah, mm -hmm. we're, I'm 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 done. If we want to end it now, I'm I'm good. <laughs> I said I got time for two more. Two, I, more I two, drinks more, left. two more drinks left. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did you finish that before me? I thought I was cruising. Oh, uh, you know, I uh, I just have that uh, iron liver, mm -hmm. that Russian iron liver. Three, two. One, I think I'm going to call it. All right, let's call it. Thank you for uh, beers or questions, LOL. Uh, I don't care either I don't way. care, yeah. Questions I got time orders. for one or two more beers, too. Yeah, I got that. Too. <laughs> uh, they're including InfoSight and other product lines, uh, which is AI from the acquisition of Nimble. Uh, who is? Is that... Uh, uh, oh, that's uh, HP. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Are they... I completely is, forgot. Is HP acquired Nimble? HP has bought so many companies in the yeah. last couple of years, including Aruba, um, yeah. that it's it's really confusing their product stack. But you no, know, yeah, HP is buying uh, is buying Nimble. Um, I didn't know that. That's new to me. Ever since they cut the dead weight, which is their consumer line in yeah. Hewlett Packard, yeah. uh, they've they've had a lot of uh, a lot, lot of cash yeah. to spend. Amazing, AWS is hiring people at the moment with Python experience. And they don't they don't rate Pearl as being worthwhile. Yeah, I don't think anybody's Pearl has been yeah. slowly dying for a long, long time. It's it's gonna suffer the same fate as COBOL, which yeah. it'll it'll be irrelevant for twelve years and then all of a sudden all the COBOL developers died and all of a sudden we need a COBOL developer yeah. now and we'll pay you five hundred thousand dollars a still, year. I think I still have a COBOL disc do you? somewhere. I think I nice. do. I think I do. Hang on to that because uh, man, you're worth your weight in gold. I don't I don't know how to use COBOL. See, <laughs> Just the fact that you have the disc means I you're hireable. I have the disc, though. I have the disc. Right. Yeah, I, I think Pearl is going to go the way of Cobol yeah, in that it'll be used way too long. Pi and then Python is, is... Yeah, if you go to um, uh, uh, look at the, the top used mm -hmm. languages at the time, I think Python is pretty high up there at the time. Pearl is just... But even there. I know Python. Yeah, everybody knows Python. Right. I mean, come on, everyone's a little bit Python scripting and stuff. I, I, I do Python scripting. I, it's I've, pretty simple. I've, I've done a I've done a four hundred line Python program before. You know, it's not. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh yeah! Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm hot hot stuff over here. That's right. Um, <laughs> I am not a programmer. I know that. I know how to script, and that's yeah. about it. The script and, is fine. Yeah. That's and good. and Python works great for that. Yeah, it does. So. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us on Talking Heads, episode 96. 96. 90, yeah, 96. What are we going to do for 100? Um, you're going to be on. Am I going to be on for 100? 97, 98, 99, 100. That's right. I'm going to be 100. You're going you're number 100. Sweet. What do you want to do? That's a good question. Yeah. A nude show? <laughs> From the waist up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We do shirtless. Yeah. 100, 100 uh, Talking Heads episode 100 shirtless edition. Yeah. <laughs> no. Because not even I want to see that. Yeah. Good Lord. I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. What would you recommend someone who has no idea of programming and wants to learn for fun? 
Uh, First off, get better on your keyboard. Yeah, that's that's the uh, one thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, most most programming now has uh, hypertext or you know autocorrect and stuff like that. So yeah. It's, it's um, I would say uh, probably. I mean, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to do uh, web programming or something mm-hmm. like that, then then definitely no CSS, uh, HTML5, all that type of stuff. Um, C Sharp is very, very popular right now. C Sharp is probably what I would recommend yeah. because it's read by most compilers. It, it is. I, I mean, um, the the Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, compiles to a lot of stuff now. Mm-hmm. You can even compile the Linux uh, distros too. Um, so I would, I would probably say C Sharp. Yeah, that would probably be the best one to go with. I would think either C C Sharp or Python for the hobby programmer. Yeah, yeah I would say so. Because like you can get the free version of Visual Studio, Python's free to get. Um, <laughs> he corrected to learn. Uh, yes, to learn equals equals a thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When I was starting to learn C, C Sharp was just kind of yeah. It's bridging very very popular bubble. right now, and it's yeah. pretty mainstream. Yeah. So you're safe if you learn that. God, that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Jeez. Ugh. I mean C plus plus. You can learn that, but yeah, that's it's kind of overkill at this point. Yeah, you don't really need that. Yeah. Uh, Python and Raspberry Pi. That's really all you need to get started. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Python. Python is another good one to do yeah. too. I, I would just say commercially, mm-hmm. C sharp is the best one. Hobbyists, Python is probably the easiest one to get into. Exactly, and that's what I got into. I am not a programmer. I don't profess to be one. In fact, I vehemently disagree with being one. Yeah. Um, but I can write a good Python script, and yeah. and that gets me ninety percent of the way to what I want to do in most of my hobbyist projects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so go Python, start learning it. Yeah. Anyway, episode ninety six in the books. Thank you go. so much for joining us. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow Steve in the bushes on his way home as he walks there. Yep. Because uh, you can't follow him any other way. That's right. I'm just a mystery. Well, you can you can you can follow me on Untapped. And on Steam, if you want to join yep. me on Steam. El Polo Diablo. Uh, his handle should be down in the description. If it's not, I will be sure to yeah. add it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also make sure to subscribe to Hops and Brews, of which we are both on from time to time. Yep. Uh, in fact, today dropped a cocktail episode of uh, me and John on Hops and Brews, which is totally worth a watch. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode 96 here on uh, Craft Computing Talking Heads. Uh, join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific time for the latest in beer and tech news, and we will see you next see week. See you guys later. Later on, guys. All right. All right. Now, what do I click? Oh, just uh, Alt F4. Okay. <laughs> it says buffering. What do I do?